All rise. <coughs> Superior Court of Fulton County is now in session. Honorable Chief Judge, you are glad to be presiding. Court come to order. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. We're back on the record in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Khalif Adams et al. in 22 SC 183572. All right, Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Sharp, good morning. Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, and Ms. Renard, good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and uh, Mr. Weinstein, good morning. All right. Mr. Huey and Mr. Matthew Sr., good morning. All right, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Harvey, and Ms. Westmoreland, good morning. All right, Mr. Ryan and Misty Williams, good morning. All right. Okay, Mr. Smith, Ms. Knight, Ms. Fulton, Mr. Atkins, and Ms. Love, good morning. Okay, uh, our jurors are here. What issues do you have before we go ahead and call them out? I, I've, I've seen your colloquy between one another this this weekend um i'll include the last email that was sent by miss love that kind of encapsulates the entire string as the next courts exhibit um okay so uh mr Steele or uh, any defense counsel anything with the state's um evidence at this point. Good morning, sir. And good morning to everybody. Um, Your Honor, I did file a motion limit number 48, which you should have a copy of yesterday. Um, and uh, that does go through some of the states. They gave us a PowerPoint. I could not open it till Sunday. And I appreciate Mr. Adkins helping me uh, send in a different format. Um, so I, I articulate that there's a person on their witness list, um, two people on their witness list, but one person who they have on their witness list to call, who to my knowledge, and if I'm wrong, I ask the state to correct me. I have not heard back from them. Um, I did not know about this witness on a witness list until April 3rd, and I can't open their um, attachments I was going to get with the state. I'm sure they can help me do that. And it's allegedly, from what I could tell, a cell phone, I guess a, a supposed expert, never been qualified as an expert. I've never seen a CV um, plotting. Uh, have we had a, have we had a, a Daubert hearing on no. this expert as well? No, I didn't even know about the person. And look, if I'm wrong and the state said, hey, he was on an earlier witness list and I missed it, I apologize. I just don't, I don't see it. Uh, but I was told about April 3rd. Um, and then... Anyway, that stuff can go later, in my opinion, because it's not dealing with Mr. Murphy. But, you know, whatever you want. But the <clears> those are the phone records, okay, and the expert. Those are phone records and experts. And then the state has a whole bunch of, they gave us a PowerPoint with, I don't remember, 100, I really don't remember, um, attachments to it. We got it, uh, I was able to open it yesterday, but they did send it to us about 11.44 Friday evening. I just couldn't access it. Um, and I have a lot of uh, um, issues to raise with this honorable court about those. There, there's videos, music videos of Mr. Williams, I don't believe would come in. Um, and I know you, what you ruled, but you also said it's conditional. You have to do 403 in the state of the late profit foundation. And there's a Mr. J uh, um, not Jeff, when we shooting a uh, automatic weapon in like a range and alleged yeah, I ruled on that one already, I believe. So is that the weapon uh, that he's got a purported switch or whatever? No, different. Okay, you all right. You rule on that. You have okay. a memory. That was uh, allegedly found in Mr. Williams' home. This is all right, happening. okay. Um, anyway, um, and it's supposedly Jeffrey Williams off camera saying, you know, shoot it or let it rip. I don't, I don't know the exact quote. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't know why that's coming into evidence. 
Um, then you have jail calls. I have been given many CDs of jail calls. It does not, it's the Jimmy Winfrey, it does not articulate or specify what jail call or jail calls we're talking about. So there's hundreds, there's probably thousands, but hundreds or more jail calls. Anyway, I put all that in there. In addition to that, on Friday morning, this past Friday morning, I uh, gave in the, in the spirit that we're trying to share information early to raise the happy judge of the informed matter court. Um, I gave uh, Mr. Williams, I gave my cheat sheet to Mr. Williams, um, exhibit number 220. I gave it to Ms. Hilton. I told her that it's my cheat sheet, but I gave it to her. Anyway, it was a copy, it was what I had on hard copy. Um, and then Ms. Hilton asked where did these, the posters of Mr. Williams' events. Where I get it from, I told her I get it from the state of discovery. I told her where, and she asked me where I gave her where in discovery. The state's objecting to that. I will be trying to use that um, with Mr. Walter Murphy. So that would be the first issue. And that's what uh, Prosecutor Love was responding to, and the state's objecting. Um, and I, I uh, will still try to um, get it in before Mr. Murphy. I know I'm not on cross yet, so all this may be a little premature, but that's another issue for the court. The cheat sheet that I said, I broke it down and I gave like the date of the event and the location of the event. That is not part of what the state gave me. My real exhibit I gave, and I told Ms. Love, uh, not, excuse me, I told myself that um, Friday, but I gave the real exhibit yesterday, the Honorable Court, Honorable um, Court Reporter Weaver has the real exhibit that I tend to. Okay. I hope I'm making sense. I'm just trying to do it. So the first thing that I got to take up is is the uh, issue of the, which will come up first, and that's the um, the posters and at all. Yes, and it's two two zero, and then it's like A through I don't know double. double. Yeah, I've seen those. Okay, all right, state. Thank you, Judge. Um, and I'm glad that Mr. Seal clarified um, what the exhibit is because on Friday I was listening as he brought the exhibit over and he did say that that itself was the exhibit. So we were unaware, both Ms. Hilton and I, that that was supposed to have been a cheat sheet and not the exhibit itself. Part of our objections did lie in the fact that it appeared on Friday that he would be tendering an exhibit that he himself had compiled uh, and uh, drawn up. He would be attempting to get that in through Mr. Murphy. Um, and so that was part of our objection. Given that he is no longer attempting to put into evidence the document that he himself constructed, the state's objection is to the flyers. I, I assume that's what he last sent us at about 10 something last night. Um, flyers of Mr. Williams, his um, clients, I guess, promotional flyers. Um, for a couple of reasons we object. One is that the flyers themselves are self-serving hearsay of the defendant, Jeffrey Williams. Um, if he attempts to introduce one of the exhibits for um, some purpose that it appears is a permissible purpose through Walter Murphy, the state um, will not object, but if he tenders uh, the exhibit that he has shown to Ms. Hilton and me on Friday and then sent to the court and counsel for the state last night, whole hog just here, look at all of these, get all of these flyers in for my client, Mr. Williams, uh, promoting something or another, then the state would object. Um, we, without seeing or hearing what basis he has for offering them and we you know i did ask i don't i didn't see a response there may have been one and i may have just missed it and i have not um, spoken to mr Steele about this but um, without knowing first in what manner he attempts to get them introduced or for what purpose or what foundation he intends to lay i can't make a further objection until the time comes that he actually tenders the evidence okay all right well i'll withhold on that until until such time as those uh Mr. Murphy is um, shown, or Mr. Steele lays a foundation as to those particular <coughs> documents. Um, okay, what about the issue of the cell phone records and the expert or purported person that's gonna come in? Have we, 
that, uh, has that already been dealt with? Have we already had a Daubert hearing in regards to that particular individual? We are still awaiting Daubert hearings on a few people, Your Honor. Um, uh, experts that the state, I believe, has indicated it will call in experts that um, Defendant Williams will call, but that person will not come. We do not anticipate using that person this week, um, perhaps not even at all. There is a, um, there are documents, there are records uh, that are in evidence that um, we are, uh, we may be putting in through a different witness altogether, but out of an abundance of caution, we, lit, we put those documents in the PowerPoint and um, shared them. But I would, I'm very much open to a conversation where we can talk about what it is that we intend to actually um, use at this point and as opposed to if something is opened up on cross-examination this week. But given the length of time that I believe we'll be in court this week, I don't think that we'll even reach those parts of our exhibit list. Okay, all right. So are we going to need to schedule a Daubert hearing for the cell phone expert? Judge, because we have a few Daubert um, hearings left, um, I, I don't think that it would be um, I'm wise to at some point schedule a Daubert hearing for the remaining experts. I believe that- How many one, experts are we talking about? I believe that one of Mr. Steele's rap um, lyrics experts, yeah, I'm, we are I'm, still awaiting that. Um, I, I know one of our um, potential experts um, has a outstanding Daubert hearing. Um, I believe it's Investigator Gaither. Um, I'd have to look over our list to see the remaining experts, and I can um, provide that to the court and counsel. All right, so by the end of the today, yes. I'd, like to, I'd like to go ahead and um, schedule those at some point in time, or if you decide that you know, no hearings are necessary, you will otherwise stipulate that, that's fine. But if I need to go ahead and have a hearing on, on those, let's go ahead and take care of it. Mr. Steele, uh, um, or anybody else, do we have any other experts that we need to, to take up Daubert-wise? Um, I, I have to think about them, not that I'm aware. Okay. And you're just, and I don't want to repeat, I know the court gathers this, but the uh, gentleman or woman, I apologize, who the state may want to call about upcoming about these phone records um, from Cobb County is either Phil, which is P-H-I-L Jones, typical spelling or D as in David, um, or uh, I'm not sure, oh, uh, Delta, thank you, Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R. Um, you know, to my knowledge, I, I've never heard of these people on a witness list until April 3rd. I've never been noticed. All right, let's find out. When were you? When were they disclosed on the state's witness list? Your Honor, I, um, one of the people that um, is listed is actually deceased. Um, the report was served in discovery, and um, I, I would have to review the filings that we've made to see when the names um, were served. But um, we can provide that to the court this afternoon along with the uh, dates or names that are outstanding for Daubert hearings. Again, that is not someone that will come up this week at all. So um, it's not um, a matter that has to be. All right, well, was somebody else replaced, was this particular person that's deceased, oh. now deceased, replaced by another expert who reviewed these records? Or is that what the state's intention oh, no. is or what? No, Your Honor, it was that we were, um, we were, listing the names of persons that are connected to the records and we learned that one of them was deceased um, but again the records and the exhibits were served in i believe the first round of discovery and we will again scour our first and longest witness list to ensure that we did not leave off anyone and unintentionally all right, Mr. Steele, check the first round of discovery and... No, no. Okay. I'll do that. Um, and also, I've never been noticed of a CV, to my knowledge, at all, or that this person would be an expert. So, What's I, his name? I either... I don't know who's, God forbid, deceased, but I have a, a Phil Jones and a D Walker. 
one or the other, or I guess so, I've got yeah. one now. Mr. Jones is the person that we received information is deceased. Both, um, both of those persons reviewed the records that were served in discovery, and again, if either name was inadvertently left off, that was inadvertently, but we will ensure we, we need to have and review okay. and find that out. Do we have a CV for Mr. Is it Mr. Jones? Mr. Mr. Jones is Mr. Jones is deceased, and who's the other expert? And, and the other one, Steve Walker, and we will um, we will make sure that all of that information is has been provided as well. Okay. All right, anything else? Is Mr. Murphy here? He was 10 minutes out about 15 minutes ago, so he should be here. He's here. He's here? Okay. All right. Can we have him uh, take the stand, please? <clears throat> All right, summon our jurors, please. Sir. While the jurors are coming in, can I just step out and use the restroom, but I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Uh, seated. I'll do it first. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, good morning. Good morning. All right, you sound caffeinated and well rested. Hope you enjoyed some of the sun this weekend. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue with the presentation of the state's case. Uh, Mr. Murphy, good morning, sir. If you can pull the mic down a little bit closer to your uh, face so you can be heard. And, sir, you're still under oath. All right. Mr. Sharp, go right ahead, sir. <coughs> Mr. Murphy, good morning. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Good morning. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Murphy, before I start asking you any questions, I'm going to ask Mr. Kokomo to approach the state as well as Mr. Murphy to um, show what's been marked defense exhibit DS8 and DS8A. Mr. Murphy, did you have an opportunity to look at DS8A? Yes. And DS8? Yes. Okay. 
And did you recognize what DS8 was? Uh, I recognize both of them. I don't know okay. the numbers though. What were they? Were they maps? Yes. Okay, and what were they maps showing? Um, Jonesboro Road. Okay, were they, did they have the sit go on Jonesboro Road within the map? Yes. Okay, were they fair and accurate representations of overhead views of the sit go at the corner of Jonesboro and Browns Mill Road? Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Your Honor, at this time, I would ask to admit defense exhibits DS8 and DS8A. Any objection to DS8 or DS8A? Not for today's purposes, Your Honor, but we would like a printout of DS8. Yeah, you should be supposed to print some of these. I apologize, and we will get that. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll admit uh, DS8 and DS8 Alpha, uh, and then we publish as you see fit. Okay. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Kokomo, would you put DS8A on the screen for us, please? Now, I just want to clear up one thing that may have been confusing from Friday. On Friday, you testified on a scale of one to 10, as far as how high you were, you were an 11. Yes. Remember that? Yes. <clears throat> Were you, you were speaking of the night of April, tw April 12th of 2015, correct? I just remember being high that whole week. Okay. W would that be an accurate answer for that night as well? Yes. Okay. okay. I think where we left off, you had testified that you had ran towards the car with the other gentleman in it, correct? Yes. And then you backed off. Yes. <clears throat> and you backed off because you were scared? I backed off because I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what they were doing in the car. What were you concerned about them doing in the car? Anything. Preparing to hit me with the car, jump out, or shoot back, or whatever. Did you know whether they had guns or not in the car? No, I didn't. Okay. After you backed off, off off of that car, you said that car drove away, correct? Yes. On Jonesboro Road towards the cemetery. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the screen? Okay, Mr. Murphy, would you uh, kindly just turn around? Is this the parking lot area of the Sitco? Yes. Okay. When we say that, oh, I'm sorry. When we say that the other car with the individuals that you didn't know pulled away on Jonesboro Road headed south, they went this way, correct? Yeah, down Jonesboro Road. Okay. And <clears throat> a short time thereafter, you got back in the car that you were in with Nard, correct? Yes. The, the white nitro. The white Jeep. The white Jeep. And you went down this road on Brown's Mill Road, correct? Yes. Nard was driving. Yes. Okay. So you did not. Mr. Sean, you have to, I'm going to have to speak up a little bit while he's at the back. Speak a little bit. Yes. Up. The car that you and Nard were in did not follow the car that went down Jonesboro Road, correct? No. Okay. No one you did not shoot at that car headed down Jonesboro Road as it left, did you? No. As that car left the Sitco parking lot, Nard did not shoot at that car, did he? No, they just left. OK. 
Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Kokomo to publish what's been marked DS9. All right, sir. And Mr. Kokomo, if you could start at 13 minutes. Excuse me, Your Honor. I don't. Oh, DS9. Okay. Mr. Kokomo, is there any way you can make that bigger? So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got you. You, you go back to how you do it, Mr. Kokomo, I'm sorry. All right, 13 minutes. Okay, and Mr. Murphy, you have previously recognized this as video from the CITGO on 4-12-2015, correct? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and that top left um, square <clears throat> is outside by the pumps, correct? Yes. <clears throat> top right square that's showing right now is the parking lot. It's right in front of the door of the sit-go, correct? The yes. front door. Okay. Mr. Kokomo, if you could play it. Okay, Ms. Kokomo, could you pause? Now, in the bottom left, that is the inside of that sit-go, correct? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Kokomo, thank you. Okay, Mr. Kokomo, if you could pause. Mr. Murphy, did you just see on the top left uh, two cars enter the uh, the parking lot? Yes. Okay. Kokomo. Okay, pause, Mr. Kokomo. <coughs> now, Mr. Murphy, you would agree that the lighter color car was entered the parking lot first, correct? Yes. And the darker color car followed right behind the lighter color car? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize the individual who went over to the driver's side of the darker color car? No. Okay. Ms. Kokomo, but you do see someone that, that went over to the darker color car? Yes. Okay. Ms. Kokomo? Pause, please. Okay. The gentleman with the red shirt that just walked off screen, the one that went over to the darker color car, do you, do you recognize that person is hot? I can't really tell. Um, you can't, can't tell now? Okay. The, how about the person in the back, the heavy set gentleman in the back? Um, do you recognize that person? I can't see, no, I can't Not yet? see like over there. Okay. Mr. Kokomo, would you let it play? Okay, Mr. Kokomo. Those two gentlemen that just entered uh, the top right square, do you recognize them now? Yeah, I think they're Bentley. The gentleman in the white shirt is OG Bentley? Yeah. And the person in the right, do you recognize that 
person is hot. I don't, I don't know who, I can't really see if they got that hat on. Okay, fair enough. All right, Miss Kokomo, if you would play. And you, you just saw those three in, individuals enter the store, correct? Yes. Okay. The third individual that I haven't asked you about, do you recognize that person? No. Okay. Now, based on your knowledge of this incident, in that car, left in that car, are a woman and children, correct? Yes. The lighter colored car? Yes. That Bentley and the other gentleman exited? Yes. Okay. And the darker color car is still there, correct? Yes. At this point, have you seen anyone from the darker color car get out to pump any gas? No. Have you seen anyone from the darker color car walk to the store to purchase an item? No. Okay. Mr. Kokomo, if you would play. All right, pause, Mr. Kokomo. Did you see the darker color car now pull in front of the lighter color car containing the woman and children? Yes. Okay. Mr. Kokomo. Ms. Kokomo, could you pause? Mr. Murphy, did you just see the third gentleman that you can't recognize um, exit the store, look over to the cars, and then re-enter the store? Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kokomo, pause for a second. Did you see someone enter, I mean, exit the lighter color car that Bentley was in? Yes. Okay, do you recognize that person? No. Do you know if that was a male or a female? Female. Okay. And did she get out to pump gas? Yes, I oh, look like it. Okay, Mr. Kokomo.
Ms. Kokomo, pause, please. In the lower left, do you see an individual looking out the window towards the outside from the outside of the store? Looking out the door, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that Mr. Bentley? Yes. Okay. Okay, Ms. Ms. Kokomo, pause, please. Ms. Murphy, on the lower right, did you just see the individual, the third individual that was in the car that you can't identify um, point someone else to go over to the car? Objection, a lot of speculation. I stand objection. Okay, did you see the third individual interact with a person that was not originally in the car with them? Yes. Okay. And uh, is that individual on the top left screen now? Yes. Okay. Ms. Kokomo, could you play? Ms. Kokomo, can you pause? Did that person that was not originally with them just go over to the car and take over the pumping of gas? Yes, that would it looked like. And has one of the individuals that was inside the dark car uh, exited the car and is talking to the female? Yes. Okay. Ms. Kokomo, yep. Pause. Did you just see Mr. Bentley looking out the window again towards the cars? Yes. Pause. Did the third individual that you cannot identify go back to the light colored car? Yes. Have Bentley and the gentleman with the red shirt exited the store at this point? No. That was a no? No. All right, Mr. Kokomo, pause. At 2143, is that the white Jeep that you and Nard and Fatty were in? Yes. Okay. At this point, when you arrived, I'm talking about you personally, did you have any insight about what was going on? I didn't know what was going on. All you knew was that Nard had given you 
a an assault rifle, correct? Yeah. And he said, let's ride. Yes. <clears throat> and you were very high. Yes. Okay. Pause. Do you recognize yourself in that video? Yes. Okay, who are you? I'm at the top left. By the car, uh, whatever kind of car that there. The, are you in the back? Yeah. Driver side, standing behind the car where the, where the, where Mr. Kokomo has put the pointer? Yes. Wearing a black hoodie. Yes, I think now, it's a jacket. Well, yeah. At this time, um, even though we can't see it, are you armed with an assault rifle? Yes. Okay. Pause. Mr. Cook, okay. And did you just point the assault rifle at the black car? Yes. Or the dark car? Yes. Do you remember if you said anything? I don't remember. Did you shoot? No. Okay. And then you retreated? Yes. Okay. Now, on the top right, standing by the door, who is that? The not. That's Nard, and is that is he standing by the front door? Do you see on the bottom left, him in the doorway? Yes. And that's the store that Bentley and the gentleman with the red shirt. Do you know who the gentleman with the red shirt? Have you seen enough of the video? I can't see his face. Oh, okay. Th they're in that store still? Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, Nard is also armed with an assault rifle, correct? Yes. And is that you running up on the car again? Yes. Okay. And you just saw the car speed off. Pause, please. And is that the car going down Jonesboro Road? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead, Ms. Kokomo. And the car that you arrived in is still in the parking lot, and the car that Bentley was in is still in the parking lot, correct? Yes. And Bentley has now e exited the store and is actually re-entering, correct? Yes. And now the gentleman with the red shirt is exiting the store, correct? Yes. And at this point, going back to April 12, 2015, you were aware that the car went down Jonesboro Road, correct? Yeah, I know the area. Okay, so whether you did or not, you could you could have told everyone, hey, that car went down Jonesboro Road, correct? Yeah. Um, okay. Mr. Kokomo. Okay, and the car with Bentley in pulls out. <clears throat> And it heads down Browns Mill Road, correct? Yeah, it might That's a, what we're seeing right now. Like a slight right, yeah. Yep. Okay. And the white truck that you're in, we're seeing it head down Browns Mill Road, correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. Kokomo, if you could put on um, DS8 on the screen, please. <clears throat> 
Okay. And um, you're familiar with this area, correct? Yes. All right. So, Ms. Murphy, if you could look at the screen or. This is the sit though, correct? Yeah, the arm, back, yeah. And the car with the other gentleman went down Brown's Mill Road, correct? Yeah. And you all went, excuse me, went down Jonesboro Road towards the cemetery, yes. correct? Yes. And you all went down Brown's Mill Road, correct? Yes. And these two roads, if everyone remains straight, are not going to intersect, isn't that correct? No. And Brown's Mill Road is the way that you would get back to the house that you were at earlier. Yes. Your understanding is you were going back to the house, correct? I just remember we were leaving from right there. We were trying to get away from right there. Could you repeat that one more time? I just remember we were trying to get away from right there. Okay. I didn't know where we were going to. We got there. <clears throat> okay. Um, so... And if you could keep that up, Mr. Kokomo, I'd appreciate it. At some point, a shooting occurred, correct? Yes. It wasn't that much longer after you left the gas station, was it? No. Okay. You were headed down Browns Mill Road in the passenger seat of the white truck. Yes. Nard was driving. Yes. Fatty was in the back. Yes. Nard had a assault rifle <clears throat> under or in, at, at his feet. Yes. You had an assault rifle in the passenger seat. Yes. Fatty, do you know if he had a gun? I can't remember. You can't remember? You're not saying he didn't, you're not saying he did. Yeah, I'm not saying. Okay. Um, Bentley, Pot, another gentleman, a female and two children were in the car behind you all headed down Browns Mill Road, correct? Yes. Okay, do you know if any of them had guns? I can't recall, I don't remember. Okay. Did you see them with guns? That day? No, not that I remember. Okay. And at that time, your understanding was the other car was headed down Jonesboro. Yes. Okay. At some point, the other car and the white truck that you were in ended up meeting, correct? Yeah, they made a right. They had to make a right somewhere. Okay. Now, I. You testified you don't remember the name of the street. Ms. Murphy, if you could. Is this the right that you feel they took? Yeah, yes, because they left before. So they, it went, they can't explain, but they left before, so. If they would have even made the first right, they would have, we still would have never, you see what I'm saying? Cause they left minutes before us. So if they make the first right, they, we still won't catch up to them. Did the cars? So I feel they made the second right. Did the cars meet at this intersection? Uh, I don't remember what intersection. I know we was on Brown's Mill and they was at a stop sign, so yeah. When, when the cars met, whatever intersection was, your car still facing forward going down Brown's Mill. Yes. With the driver's side of the car facing this way. Yes. Okay. And was the car with the other gentleman in driving this way, if you look at this way, towards your car? Yes, they were coming towards Brown Mill. Okay. So the cars were perpendicular? Um, yeah, is, is that what it means? I okay, I got you. <clears throat> okay. Did you personally see the car, the dark color car 
approaching you all at that intersection? No. Okay. Did someone in the white nitro see that car? Yes. Who saw the car coming? Objection, I see this characterization of the evidence of who saw the car coming. I stand in judgment of one. You can refer Without saying what anyone said, did anyone indicate <laughs> to you that the car was coming? Objection, I did as to the car coming. I That's stand, not the testimony. I stand in judgment. You can rephrase that. Okay. You, you said the car was driving towards y'all, right? Which car? The, okay, I understand. The dark colored car was driving towards the white nitro, correct? Yes. Okay. And who was the first person that noticed the car driving towards y'all? I can't remember, but it was either uh, Fatty or not. It was one. Okay. I wasn't on that side of the car just to even see it coming. So. Right. The driver's side of the car was closest to the car that was oncoming. Yes. So the driver or the back passenger to the driver would have been able to see it. <clears throat> and what what happened? What happened when the car was seen coming towards you? Uh, we blocked it off. I, I think I remember we blocked it off. Okay. Was was at the time that you blocked it off was. The car with Hot and Bentley and the children and the, and the woman, was it behind you or in front of you? Behind us. It was behind you? And then that car, what did it do? The car with Bentley and the children, what did it do? It went around us and kept straight. <clears throat> kept straight down Brown's Mill? Yes. As you blocked the car off? Yes. Okay. And then once Bentley and the car with Bentley and the children got past, did the car that was coming towards you, did they stop? If yeah. you were caught? Yeah, the, the, the car that's, yeah, they stopped. Okay. And then what happened? It happened, <laughs> the shooting happened. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to ask you about specifics of the shooting. Okay, so who shot? Nard. Okay, Nard was seated in the driver's seat? Yes. Okay, explain to the jury how he was driving and he shot. He stopped the car. Okay. Did he shoot through the window? No, he let the window down. He let the window down? It might have already been down. I can't remember. Like, but it, it was we definitely didn't shoot through the glass. And where did he get the gun from? He already had it. Okay, well, where was it? In the car. I can't it might have been in his lap in the floor. I, it was he had it. <clears throat> okay. Did anyone hand it to him? No. Okay. And when he shot, do you remember how many shots he fired? I can't remember. A couple, more than one. <clears throat> more than one? Was it less than 10? Yes. Do you know how many shots a gun like that holds? It depends on the magazine. Okay. Do you remember, uh, telling investigators that you thought it was three or four back in 2016? I, I might have said that. Okay. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Nard shot. Do you know if Fatty shot? I don't recall. Now, did you shoot? I, how could I shoot? I'm on the opposite. I just saw what I got out of the car. I didn't get out of the car, though. I'm not arguing with you. I'm asking. Did you shoot? No. And after Nard shot, what happened? Left. Did you, did you personally, I'm asking what you knew, did you know if anyone was shot or not? No. Do you remember where you went? We went back to the house we left from. And you got there by traveling down Browns, Browns Mill Road, correct? Yes. Okay. Cool. On that video we watched, you said, I already asked you about the house. 
on the video that we watched and to your recollection, you said you know Shannon Stillwell. Was Shannon Stillwell at that gas station, that Sitco that night? No. You said you know Jeffrey Williams. Was Jeffrey Williams at that gas station that night? No. These other gentlemen in this courtroom, take all the time you want. Look at their faces. Were any of them at the gas station that night? No. Okay. On the ride to the gas station, phone calls being made. Were there any communications involving Shannon Stillwell that night? No. Were there any communications involving Jeffrey Williams that night? No. Do you know of any communications involving any of these other gentlemen that night? No. When you got back to the house, was Shannon Stillwell at that house? No. How about Jeffrey Williams? Was he at the house? No. <clears throat> any of these other gentlemen, look at their faces. Were any of them at the house that night? No. Okay, I'm going to shift topics a little bit about paying, quote unquote, paying dues. Okay? Uh -huh. Putting money on books. Uh -huh. You remember being asked about that? Yes. <clears throat> okay. You've been to Rice Street before, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, let's just talk a little bit about Rice Street. In Rice Street, when we say Rice Street, we're talking about the Fulton County Jail, correct? Yes. The address of the Fulton County Jail is 901 Rice Street, correct? I think that's it, yeah. It's, People yeah. in Atlanta call Kinda the jail Rice, Rice Street. Street. Yes. <clears throat> okay, that's common parlance. You would agree? Yes. Okay. Um, when you are an inmate, at Rice Street, when you are being held, that's. Can you explain the difference between jail and prison? As far as is is jail when you're waiting charges. Prior to when your case is pending, is that correct? I think so. I I, I guess this if they if they still holding you or you ain't pled guilty or got no time. Right. And then once your case has been resolved, if, if you're sentenced to prison, you go to prison, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about jail first and specifically Rice Street. Um, do you have a room when, when you're an inmate at Rice Street, do you have a room? I have a cell. A cell. Okay. And, and how big is that cell? I don't know. The, like the, it's small. <laughs> it's small. Okay, and what is in that cell? A toilet and a sink. A toilet, a sink, and what else? Two metal <laughs> beds, two bunk, whatever you want to call it, bunk beds, metal beds. Metal beds, and they're set up bunk style? Yes. <clears throat> okay, and, and the toilet and sink are made of metal? Yes. Okay, and there's, you said two beds. Um, how many people live in a cell? It depends on what flow, at Rice Street, it depends on what flow you are on. Okay. Um, is it possible that more than one person lives in a cell? Yes. Okay, have you been in Rice Street with a cellmate? Yes. Okay. And in fact, in Rice Street, some people don't even get a cell, do they? They sleep on boats, correct? Yes. And what are boats? Boats is a boat, a boat is a, uh, is this a, like a, canoe with a mat in it and you sleep in the, the day area like under the stairs or by the window it's a mat that's laid on the floor correct yes and people sleep on these mats on the floor yes in a common area yeah the day room okay typically when you're an inmate at rice street how often are you allowed out of your cell probably about about four, it depends on the officer, but you about four to six hours a day. Do you get to leave your cell anytime you want? No. Let's talk about the facilities. Uh, I noticed you didn't mention a shower. Um, where are the showers? In Rice Street, the shower by the, um, is out in the day room area. In the day room area? Okay. Like, it's like by the end room on the end. 
And do I get to, when I want to take a shower, do I get to go into a, a room and close the door and undress and take a shower? No. How does that work? What is the shower? It's a hole in the wall with a curtain on. Okay. And and is it for how many people are taking a shower at one po- at one time? One. <laughs> okay. So there's only one shower? No, it's two. It's one for the top. People who sleep down on the top and one on the bottom. And and how often are you allowed to shower? And whenever the hours you watch your room. Okay. Um do you consider the facilities, the shower facilities, clean? No. Does the water get clogged? Clogged. Even the drains get clogged? Yes. Is there standing water when you shower? Standing water? Standing water. Is there water on the ground that builds yeah, up? Like a puddle, yeah. That's happened before? Yes. Okay. How about the bathroom facilities? Toilets get clogged? Yes. Is that a regular occurrence? Yes. Let's talk about the food at Rice Street. Is, in your opinion, what do you think about the food at Rice Street? (laughs) That ain't no food. (laughs) There's not food. Okay. Is that an opinion that's shared by most people? Uh, Objection, speculation. I stand objection. Okay. Now, when you say ain't no food, you are brought trays, correct? Oh, yes. Um, you're saying you prefer not to eat the trays. I mean, I would, I would rather not, but if I ain't got enough to eat, no commissary, and then, then I eat it. But... Okay, if you have no commissary, you're going to eat the trays? Yes. Okay, to stay alive? Exactly. Okay. How about at Rice Street um, hygiene products? Do they provide you with hygiene products at Rice Street? You mean like give it to you or you? Yes. No, they don't give it to you. They don't give it to you. No. So um, the soap that you want to use, they don't give that to you. No. Shaving supplies, they don't give it to you. No. Deodorant. No, you have to buy all that. Okay, at the commissary. Yes. How about phone calls? Now, you don't get, in, at Rice Street, you don't get in-person visits from your, uh, you said you have children, correct? Yes, four. The mother of your children, you don't get in-person visits, do you? No. Okay, what about your mother? You don't get in-person visits from your mother, correct? No. How about friends? No. Okay, <coughs> so do, you, do they have phones at Rice Street? Yes. And you're allowed to call loved ones from Rice Street using these phones, correct? Yes. These phones, are they free to make phone calls? No. They give you free calls when you first in like intake. But other than that, then no. When you first get into intake, they give you free call. Okay. After you get out of intake, are the calls free? No. Okay, so how can how can you make calls to people from Rice Street? People that you love? They have to put money on their phone. Is that through commissary, money on your books? Oh, yeah, you could put, I forgot they got that. No, you could put money from your books on there, but other than that, when I used to be in there, used, they had the person on the outside had to put money on their, on their phone for you to call. Either way, whether it goes through the, the books first or directly to the phone, um, it costs money from people on the outside, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, all these questions I asked you about Rice Street, is it fair to say that your answers would be similar uh, for prison as well? You don't get free calls from prison? Yeah, some of them would be the same, but most of them, no. Is, 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 is Rice Street worse in prison? Yes. Okay. It depends on the condition you're talking about, though. And it depends on the prison. Prison is dangerous, in. but Rice Street is, like, far as, like, Hygiene and all that you were talking about, the shower is worse. Like the living condition is worse. Okay, so let's talk about we, we you know, we brought up money on books. Can you those terms? I want you to explain to the jury. Is money putting money on your books, putting money on someone's books, is that putting money on their commissary? Is that the same thing? Yes. 
And essentially, that is putting money on an inmate's account, correct? Yes. That they can use to buy certain things. Yes. Okay. And so personal hygiene products, money on the books would allow an inmate to purchase soap. Yes. Correct? Would allow an inmate to purchase deodorant, correct? Yes. Would allow an inmate to purchase shaving supplies, correct? Yes. Would allow a person to purchase cleaning supplies, correct? I don't know about the I mean, if you want to buy the soap, then okay, the whole so, method you could do to buy it off the store and then turn it into a cleaning product. Though. So you could buy soap and turn it into a cleaning supply, but in your experience, cleaning supplies are not in the jail commissary. No. Okay, thank you for that correction. Um, how about food? Um, can you buy chips? Yeah, it's just snacks. It ain't like no meal. Honey buns. Yes. Also, what is it? Do you know what a trustee tray is? Yeah, yeah that's the, the food that they get. A, it comes from like staff dining and stuff like that. Can you buy that using commissary? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, if if the trustee want to sell his food, then swap it out for commissary, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's something that you could barter with a trustee to get. Yeah. To get, and when you say it's food that comes from staff dining, that is um, a higher quality of food, in your opinion. Yeah. Give me, give me an example of, of what the higher quality of food would be. Okay. How about little plastic shower shoes that protect your feet from the standing water in the showers. Can you buy those at the jail store? I think so, yeah. And how about phone calls? The ability to stay in contact with your loved ones. Can you order phone calls using money on your books? Yeah, that's a new thing. Um, I just like that. I'm not going to jail for this. How about stamps that you can send your loved ones letters? Can you get that at the commissary? Yes. How about greeting cards, birthday cards, things like that for yes. your loved ones, for your children, for yes. your mother, Mother's Day cards? Can you get those at the commissary? Yes. Okay. Do they sell fancy steaks at the commissary? No. no. Do they sell caviar at the commissary? I don't even know what that is. Okay. I heard of it though. The truth is, Mr. Murphy, you've been to Rice Street before. A lot of times. Okay. You said a lot of times. People have put money on your books before, correct? Yes. Your family has put money on your books before, correct? Yes. The mothers of your children have put money on your books before, correct? Yes. Your friends have put money on your books before, correct? Mm -hmm. They probably gave some money to go on. They ain't go, like, put it on there. They self, but they probably, like, money. if they see my mom, they'll give some money. Like that. Give your mom money, and then she puts on the books. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your lawyer, Jacoby Hudson, he's put money on your books before, correct? He yes. cares, and he cares about you. Yeah, he's a friend of the family. You view that as a good thing, a great thing. Your lawyer cares so much about you that he puts money on your books. Yeah, it's a nice gesture. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're not unique in the fact that you've had money on your books, are you? <laughs> Other people in the jail, most people have money on their books, correct? Yeah, there's plenty of weeks I, I went without money too, though. So, right, sometimes yeah. you have been without money. Yes. But all sorts of other people have money on their books as well, correct? Yes. You have had friends locked up in your life, haven't you? When you've been out. Yes. Okay. And there's been times where you have put money on people's books, correct? I've given money to go on their books. I never went to Rice School to put no money on nobody's book, though. So you've given money to people's mothers so they could put that money on your friend's book? Yes. 
you've given money to the mother of people's children or their wives so they could put money on books? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Why do you do that? It's just, I know how I feel to be in there. It, you feel, I can't even describe the way you feel, but when the people do stuff like that, you know they die for you, cause that's like a dark place to be in, dark space to be in. You would want people to do that for you, correct? Of course. And you therefore do it for other people, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Has anyone ever forced you to put money on people's books? No. Has anyone ever told you you need to put money on this person's books? No. Has there ever been any rules that you've had to follow to put money on people's books? No. Okay. You've identified some people through your testimony as being YSL. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that was your testimony. Have you put money on the books of people that have, in your mind, been associated with YSL? No. Have you put, and, and I'm talking about either directly or indirectly. You mean like somebody in here? Like No, just in general. Oh, yeah. Okay. And have you also put money on people's books who you do not consider YSL at all? Yes. Okay, let's talk about my client, Mr. Stillwell, for a second. Um, do you know, if, if you know, what year you met Mr. Stillwell? I think it was, I think it was 2015. Okay, 2015? Yes. Okay, and, and you testified that in your mind, he's as associated with YSL. Yes, he's a, yes. Okay. And if I recall your testimony correctly, you made that determination because he started hanging out at the studio. Yes. Okay. The studio, when you say the studio, you're talking about the recording studio, correct? Yes. Okay. And could you just explain what the recording studio is? Is there a specific recording studio or just are you using that term generally? It's not just one, dude. I just, we just go to the studio. There's, are there dozens of recording studios in Atlanta? Yes. <clears throat> okay. And what, and is the recording studio where hip hop music is recorded? Yes. And well, all kind of music, <laughs> not all, just hip hop. All kinds of music is yes. recorded. And when Mr. Stillwell, would be started showing up at the studio, he was trying to record music, correct? Yes. Mr. Stillwell was never beaten into any game. Not to, to your, my knowledge, no. Object to speculation. To your knowledge, was Mr. Stillwell ever required to commit any crimes to hang around you all? Object to speculation. Have you ever known anyone to have been beaten into YSL, to your knowledge? No. Okay, you, you said something last week. When I did those interviews, I would have cut off my arm to get back to my son. You said you have four children? Yes. Three girls and a boy? No, two, two girls, two boys. Two girls and two boys. At the, at the time you had one, one son, correct? Yeah, at the time I had two girls, but I had got arrested and my, <clears throat> my fiance was pregnant with my son. Gotcha. Okay. And when you gave those statements, um, you were <clears throat> staying in Rice Street, correct? Yes. Under the conditions that we discussed earlier, correct? Yes. Okay. And there's another thing about staying in Rice Street 
your case is still pending, correct? And your case was still pending when you gave those statements, correct? Yes. Um, back in 2015 and 2016, when you were given those statements, um, and I'm going to give you, hand you, if I may approach your honor, 18CC, state 18CC. All right. This is the indictment and your plea. And um, actually, if I may approach again. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Murphy, that's the indictment and the specific counts are listed right here, okay? okay. At the time you were facing violation of Georgia Criminal Street Gang Act charge, correct? Yes. Okay. You were kept facing four counts of criminal attempt to commit murder. Yes. Uh, facing aggravated battery. Yes. Facing four counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Yes. Um, facing four counts of possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Yes. You were facing 255 years. Does that sound right? Up to 255 years. A long time. I don't remember what that is that time, but it was a long time. And this is for the April 12th, 2015 incident. Yeah, that was just one of my cases I had at that time. In your mind, who who controlled how much time you would actually serve? Object and speculation. I'm asking in his mind. <clears throat> okay. You ended up pleading guilty. Yes. Okay. Now, can you um, look at count one of that indictment that you pled guilty to? That, that approach to okay, sir. <clears throat> count one that you pled guilty to in April 12, 2015. That's uh violation of the criminal street gang act correct yes <clears throat> okay could you miss murphy i'll read it and could you follow along and let me know if i read it correctly okay okay I think that the council testified, Mr. I stand okay, Ms. Murphy, if you could if you could recount one for me. In the name and the behalf of the citizens of Georgia, do charge and accuse Walter Murphy with the offense of participating in criminal street gang activity. O O C G A. 16154 for the said accused in the county of Fulton County and state of Georgia on the 12th day of April 2015 did unlawfully while associating with a criminal street gang participate in criminal gang activity through commission of an offense. I don't know that word. In I don't know that word. In participant, oh, in paragraph one of code section 1615.3 to wit criminal attempt to commit murder contrary to the law of said state 
the good order, peace, and dignity thereof. Okay. In count one, violation of criminal street gang from April 12th, 2015. Does that allegation ever mention YSL? Does it, does it say YSL anywhere in that allegation? No. Does that allegation ever say that the crime committed on April 12, 2015 was done in furtherance of YSL? No. Okay. May I approach your honor with states 1CC? One Charlie Charlie. One Charlie Charlie. Yes, you Mr. Murphy, do you identify one Charlie Charlie as the plea agreement that you struck regarding this case? Yes. Okay, and you made, you initialed several factual acknowledgements in this case, correct? As part of your deal? Yes. You had to initial them for the deal to go through, correct? Yes. And you wanted the deal to go through because if the deal went through, you were going home, correct? I'm going back home. I had just came home from doing it seven and a half years. Right. You were upset because you had been arrested for this RICO charge for the same incident that you had already done seven years for. Yes, I thought it was double jeopardy. And you wanted to go back home. Yes. Okay. And so you you um, initialed these factual acknowledgments. I want to talk to you about number 14, if you could turn to page four. Okay, acknowledgement number 14. You you did initial that acknowledgement, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, could you read it? Acknowledgement 14. In the year of 2016, I was convicted in Fulton County indictment number 15, SC 138234. Of oh, participation in criminal street activity, aggravated battery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, four counts and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. felony. The victim in the case was Dexter Montgomery. I committed these acts during the time period that I was a YSL gang member. Okay, it says, I committed these acts during the period that I was a YSL gang member, correct? Yes, that's what it says. Anywhere in that acknowledgement, number 14, does it say that you committed these acts in furtherance of YSL. In number 14? Yes. So, and yes, that does, it, does anywhere in number 14 say that you committed these acts in furtherance of YSL? No. Does it say that you committed these acts in furtherance of Jeffrey Williams? No. Does it say that you committed these acts in furtherance of Shannon Stillwell? No. Does it say that you committed these acts in furtherance of any of these other gentlemen sitting here? No. Mr. Murphy, you've testified that you're now sober, correct? Yes. You have a job. Yes. You're trying to be a father. Yes. Your life is in a better place than it was back then, correct? Than it ever been. Okay. When you look back on April 12th, 2015, you committed a crime, correct? Yes. Regardless of what was going on in that other dark car, what you did was wrong, correct? Yes. It was heinous. I don't know that. It means. was awful. Yes. It was violent. Yes. <clears throat> what NAR did was awful and violent. Yes. It was selfish, wasn't it? Yes. It was selfish against, it was selfish for you to even put yourself in a position that Mr. Montgomery could be hurt and for his head to get hit by a bullet. It was selfish. Yes. <clears throat> it was selfish to, against your children, to put yourself in a position that you would be taken away from their lives. Yes, That was. was selfish of you, wasn't it? It was. <clears throat> You're not saying that you didn't do anything wrong in 2015, are you? No. Okay. But the reality is, Mr. Murphy, 
This was an isolated incident committed by men who were high, out of their minds, correct? Yes. Committed by men with assault rifles, correct? Yes. Committed by men who got call a call at a gas station, correct? Yes. That crime did not involve anyone back here, did it? No. That crime did not further <clears throat> any interests of YSL, did it? No. And none of these gentlemen had anything to do with it. Isn't That's that correct? Move on. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a comfort break? Um, let's go ahead and take 10 minutes and let's see where, see where we can leave from there, all right? All right, we're in recess. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our jury's left us. Take you 10 minutes.
All right, sir, name, do we have a while of participants, sir? Uh, yes, sir. All right, summon our jurors, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, um, next council that wishes to examine Mr. Murphy. All right, Mr. Weinstein. Good morning, Mr. Murphy. Good morning. Uh, my name is Doug Weinstein. I'm Diamante Kendrick's attorney. Okay. You identified, um, I believe you called, you know him as Yak, is that correct? Yes. Um, and you know Yak's government name is Diamante Kendrick? Yes. Okay. And you identified him in the courtroom last week as a member of YSL. Yes. Uh, you know that, should I call him Yak or Mr. Kendrick for you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll call him Mr. Kendrick, okay? I'm referring to the man you know as Yak. So... You know Mr. Kendrick is a rapper, correct? Yes. And you know Mr. Kendrick is on the YSL label, correct? Yes. And you know Mr. Kendrick because you toured with him, is that right? Yes. Um, and you traveled with him, I assume. You went to different places on the tour. And that's how you know Mr. Kendrick, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions. Okay. All right, Mr. Matthews. Murphy, good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Murphy, I represent Mr. Marquavius Huey here uh, at the table. I just have a few questions for you. Last week, uh, you recall uh, speaking outside the hall with uh, Mr. Max Sharp, the gentleman who had been asking you questions for several minutes this morning? Yes. And when you spoke with him outside, uh, you had spoken also with uh, Mr. Kokomo, uh, the gentleman back there with the glasses on? The dark skin brother? Yes. Okay. And they showed you uh, several videos and, and things of that nature from many, many, many years prior, correct? Uh, Mr. Um, Kokomo? Yeah, but the other, um, I don't know her name. Uh, the, this gentleman here with the mask? Yeah, he on. was, when I seen him, that was, you, I think you're talking about two different incidents. Okay. When, they, when he showed me the video, I didn't see, um, Mr. Kokomo. When Mr. Kokomo showed me the video, I didn't see the other gentleman. You didn't see Mr. Sharp? No. Okay. But the point I'm making is, though, they went over the videos with you. Mr. Kokomo showed me the video. He didn't go over it with me. I tried to ask him something. He was like, he can't do that. Right. So he showed you the videos and oriented you and, and made you more familiar with the incidents from several years ago, correct? Yes. The state of Georgia, they didn't do that with you, correct? They didn't go over the videos with you? No. The first time that you had actually seen those videos and refamiliarized yourself with those videos and the, and the incidents from several years ago was with Mr. Kokomo, correct? Yes. <clears throat> and that would explain why you were able to answer Mr. Sharp's questions more clearly, correct? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other, any other examination?
Thank you, sir. I heard you state that your life is more at peace or better now than it ever has been. Is that what I heard? Yes. I'd like to um, talk with you about your your life, if that's okay, like the prosecutor was asking you, okay? I'm gonna yes. ask you questions. Yes, sir. Now, there was a time that you were very friends with Jeffrey Williams. Is that true? Yes. And that happens in childhood, right? Yes. And you met him approximately when you were about 12 years of age. Do you remember that? You real good friends with him? I mean, him in a long time, but I, as far as I can remember, I knew him. You knew about him before that? Yes. And you were born actually seven days ahead of Jeffrey Williams in the same month, same year. Is that true? Yes. Both born in August of, two, of 1991, right? Yes. <clears throat> and growing up as a child um, with Jeffrey, you know that he was raised in Jonesboro South projects. Is that true? Yes. And you were raised in the nearby projects, right? Yes. And you would spend time um, at Jeffrey's home at times growing up, right? Yes. Jonesboro South. Yes. And he'd be at your house too at times, right? Yes. <clears throat> And um, in Jeffrey's home, it would be lots of music. Is that fair to say? Yes. And we're not just talking, you you made this known, it's not just rap music, it's all types of music, right? Yes, and Jeff I, all genres. And Jeffrey loved music, true? Yes. And you love music. I do. And on Sundays, if you remember being at Jeffrey's home, uh, his mother would play gospel, is that true? Uh -huh. I don't think it was just Sunday, but we, she played gospel. Okay. And she also would read the Bible. Is that true? Yes. I stay in And when you were so close with Jeffrey, you also became close with his family. Is that true? Certain people in his family. I think I was close with his, with his family first, and then me and him. And you called his mother Mama or Mama Duck. Is that true? Yes. And um, in your family, your mom had, has uh, five children. Is that fair to say? Yes. And each one of those children have a different father. Is yes. That true? And none of those five fathers were part of anybody's life. Is that true? That's not true. Okay. How about your father? Was he ever part of your life? No, I don't know my father. Okay. Um, and your mother was... Um, Disabled, is that fair to say? Yes. She couldn't walk? She still can't walk. <clears throat> and she was never employed, never working, is that true? No. Did she work? No, I'm saying she never worked. <laughs> I misunderstood you. And you're the second of the five children and you're the oldest man. Yes. True. And um, there were times when you were real young that it was looked upon you you that you had to pay family expenses is that true yes you paid your mother's car note yes and food for the family yes clothing for the family yes all the necessary items to try to keep lights on or etc is that true yes sir and you did that at a really young age 12 13 14 is that true yes and unfortunately sometimes the money didn't meet the expenses. And I heard you say earlier on direct examination, your family was, you used the term, I believe, put out. Remember saying that? Yes. To the jury? And put out means that the belongings were put on the street because you couldn't live in the house. Not just you, the family couldn't live in the house. Is that what you mean by put out? Yes, when they sit your stuff on the side. It, say it that again? When they sit your stuff outside in the front of the neighborhood. And, um, that's a rough way to grow up. Would you consider that true? I, I definitely don't want that for my kids. And by the age of like 10, 11, 12, you started to use marijuana. Is that right? Yes. And then it escalated, if that's a true word, but you did other drugs too, true? Yes. 
and it got to the point where drugs gave you a sense of belonging, like an escape. Is that true? Yes, from my escape, yeah. Now, Jeffrey was born in similar poverty. Is that true? Similar, yeah. And um, there were times that you would sleep at Jeffrey's home on the floor with him, right? Yes. And he would do the same at your house, right? Yes. And because of economics, that that's, means financial money, mm -hmm. um, you and Jeffrey would exchange clothing? Yes, we have before. Because it would just give you some a different type of clothing to wear the yeah. next day. Is that true? Different look. And even though the clothing may be dirty, it was at least different <laughs> clothing than you wore the day before, right? Yes. All right. And it got to the point that you and Jeffrey got so close that if you were both hungry, but you had a dollar or two three, you'd actually buy food and split all that food with him. Is that true? Yes. And he did that for you too? Hey, Tom, yeah. <clears throat> And the people in the area, some of the people were in the same type of financial problem as you and Jeffrey's family. Is that true? People yeah, didn't it have was money. other families, yeah. <clears throat> now, from being with Jeffrey, um, you learned that um, he, he idolized um, Little Wayne. Is that true? Objection, are we self-serving? A standing objection. Did you idolize Little One? The, the, you know who still do. One? I still do. Okay. And to your knowledge, was Jeffrey uh, hold the same opinion? Objection. Same, same objection. How about Tupac? Do you know who Tupac is? Yes. Same answer? Yes. Same question. Now, did you observe Jeffrey study the music of Lil Wayne? We both did. Okay. And did you observe Jeffrey or and you study the music of Tupac? Yes. And um, you said on direct examination last week that you called Jeffrey Little Jeff. Is that true? Yes. And um, do you know there came a time that um, Jeffrey wanted to be called Young Thug? Yes. He named himself, true? Yes. And that was for his ability to try to get into the rap objection. industry. Is that true? Speculation. Same objection. Did Jeffrey choose the name Young Thug for musical his musical career? Objection, speculation. <clears throat> Do you know whether Young Thug was a musical creativity, creative name objection, by Jeffrey? Speculation. If you know. I'm all with the objection. You can answer it, sir, if you can. Okay, I said again. Please. Do you know whether the formation of the name Young Thug was for his musical? That was that was his right name. Okay. And do you know what uh, Thug stands for? It got a couple of meanings, but yeah. Okay, tell the jurors. Tell them about all of them that I know. Sure. Uh, the hate you give, truly humble under God. It's a couple of them. Now, you mentioned that you have tattoos on your face. The prosecutor was asking you about those. Remember all that question? Yes. You also mentioned that tattoos got on the face because you, you were trying to mimic, mimic copy. You were trying to be like um, a rapper. Do you remember that? Remember saying that to jurors? Yes. And um, did Little Wayne, before you ever had tattoos on your face, did he have tattoos on his face? He's the first one I rapper I seen with tattoos. Okay. And did you copy Lil Wayne? Yes. And Jeffrey has tattoos on his face, right? Yes. <clears throat> Same reason for rap? You guys were trying to get in the rap industry? Yes. Now, when you heard Jeffrey perform music, you've heard him perform music, right? Yes. When, even when he was young, 12 years of age, um, did he try to sound like, and did he sound like Little Wayne? Uh, back then, yeah, he, he did. And um, did you know that Little Wayne um, appeared to give out 
uh, impression that he's with the Bloods gang. Did you, were you aware of that? He's one of them, yes. All right. And I'm not limiting it just to Lil Wayne, other people in the rap industry, true? Yes. <clears throat> now, had you, did Jeffrey work hard at music and performing music and becoming a rapper and getting a name for himself? He worked harder than me. Did he, did you ever see anyone work as hard as Jeffrey Williams? No. Is it true that by the time Jeffrey was about, when he met you around that time, in your neighborhood, if you know, his reputation was that he's a, he's a good rapper. Is that true? Can you ask it again? Yeah. Did he have a reputation in your neighborhood as being known to be a good rapper? You said when I met him? Yeah, when he's a young man. Yes, even when he's mm -hmm. young. First, everybody knew him from throwing a football. Though. He was a good quarterback. Okay. And then he started rapping, and everybody loved his rap. So he kept doing it. Say, say the end again. I apologize. I said he started rapping, and everybody loved it. So. And his talent. To you, did he have talent? Yeah. It was obvious? Yeah, he was nice. Okay. Do you remember um, there come a time that Jeffrey was marketing himself as a rapper, Young Thug. Oh, what do you mean, like through marketing? His, through his iPhone, promoting himself. Yes. And did you help him promote himself? For years. And did you actually spend tremendous amount of time talking with people about the rapper Young Thug? Yes. Come out to the shows, Young Thug? Yes, I did it all. It was no limit. <laughs> Put on your own personal social media. Young Thug, yes. Come, come view him. Yes. Come talk about him. Yes. Put him on your social, other people's social media. Yes. You are attempting to improve the notoriety, meaning the visibility of the Young Thug rapper. True. Yes, I know he was better than me. So one yeah. more time. I knew he was better than me at rapping, so I want to try to hold him back. I'm gonna try to get him to be bigger than maybe I could be bigger. Okay, and other people did that too in your neighborhood, true? Yes. A lot of neighbors actually got behind him. Yes. And when I say got behind him, you'd come out to shows yes. he was performing. And would it be fair to say there were hundreds of people come out to his shows even when, very in the beginning, is that true? Yes. And people would play his music in the streets of your neighborhood? Yes. And ask the DJs to play his songs, all true? Yes. I you've done that. I've seen the questions before. You've done that, right? You've asked DJs to play his songs, right? Yes, and radio stations. At radio stations. Yes. Do you know um, whether it was marketing, meaning it was for popularity, that Jeffrey would get onto social media and get into arguments with other rappers. Uh, ever yeah. see that happen? I stand in Jeffrey. Did you ever see, did you ever uh, get involved with Jeffrey getting in arguments with other rappers so he would improve his notoriety? Uh, speculation. I stand in Jeffrey. Did you witness that Jeffrey getting in arguments with other rappers on social media? Yes. Okay. And is that part of getting out his name and his brand. Do you remember Jeffrey's um, eventually did mixtapes? You know what a mixtape is? Yes. Or an album? Yes. And eventually, do you remember um, coming out with a series of mixtapes or albums, I Came From Nothing. Remember that? Yeah, that was his, that was his first That's project, okay. I think. Okay, and you helped promote that, right? Yes. <laughs> and would you go with Jeffrey to concerts that he put on, performances? Yes. All the time, right? Yes. And would you work those concerts and try to um, sell what they call merch or merchandise at times? Yes. And would you promote those concerts, meaning tell people, get out the word on your social media or otherwise, put up posters, whatever it is, yeah. 
to come to these shows. Yes. <clears throat> and it benefited Jeffrey a great deal, your efforts, true? Oh, that's, that's, that's that yeah. You assisted him in his career. My opinion, yeah. Okay. And do you remember, um, and you were shown it earlier when you were, you remember some of your social media posts that you went over on direct examination with the prosecutor? I don't know. They showed, and they showed you blood and SMM. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And some of those actually dealt with um, things like going to Chattanooga, Tennessee in July 2012 to stop the violence. You remember doing that with Jeffrey? I don't recall doing it, but we went to a lot of, a whole lot of, like, down south states and cities and stuff like that. The one I'm asking you about, remember Trayvon Martin? It was dedicated to Trayvon Martin. You remember that gentleman? I know Trayvon Martin. Yeah. I you remember, remember going to that show in Chattanooga. And if you don't remember, it's fine. I think, I, don't, I can't recall. It was like going to that show, but we went to a lot of shows. So. As you started um, going around with Jeffrey to different shows throughout Atlanta and, like you said, beyond, you remember Jeffrey telling you, to stop doing the stupid stuff. I'm not cursing the last word, but do you remember that? Objection here for themselves, sir. I stand objection. Do you remember it being told to you, or did you get the impression that you have to stop committing crime? I stand in form of question you can place. To be around Jeffrey, you had to stop committing crime. Do you remember him telling you that? Objection here, sir. I stand in question. Were you were you, did you get the understanding that in order to keep being around Jeffrey, you had to stop committing crime. Yes. Now, besides, I'm, I'm excluding drugs. I'm excluding lean and marijuana. I'm excluding gambling. Excluding means I'm not um, asking about that, okay? Okay. Did Jeffrey ever instruct you, order you, ask you, to commit a crime to enhance any criminal street gang. Objection here, sir. I'll allow that one. I'm, co I'm confused. What I don't know what to do. Uh, the Honorable Court's allowing you to answer the question. Can you answer it again? Yeah. Besides, you know, doing drugs and gambling, I'm not talking about that. Okay? Okay. Did Jeffrey ever instruct you, order you, ask you, to commit any crime to enhance um, any criminal street gang. Objection would be a legal conclusion. That's not legal conclusion. I understand. I'm going to overrule the objection. I did it last time. Did so you ever answer it? Yeah. He was mad at me. He didn't want me doing He didn't even want me on Cleveland Avenue. He didn't want me doing nothing. <laughs> They're going to get me taken away from my kids or him or nobody. He didn't want me doing none of that. Did Jeffrey ever? ask you or instruct you to commit a crime? No. Did Jeffrey ever, ever, um, was with you, I said that wrong. I, I wanna ask you a couple of questions. I'm gonna change it. the way I said it was, was the wrong tense. I wanna go back to September 11th of 2013. I'm not asking you to remember the date, but that is your arrest when the car slams into the side wall. Adrian Bean, Fred Prethro, you're taken to the hospital. Remember that? Yes. All right. Now, you told the ladies and gentlemen jury you were shot twice during that event. True? I was, yes. And one time is in the upper left thigh. True? In my main artery. And... Because of that, you stayed in the hospital an extended period of time. You had surgery, right? I had two surgeries. And the other bullet went into your right heel. Is that true? Yes. And um, was Jeffrey Williams in that car with you at the time of this event? No. Was he involved in that event? No. I want to show you what has been marked um, your guilty plea and indictment. Do you have that? Yeah. Anybody have that? Do you have a number? 
Got me approach. You may. God bless you. They said 17, I believe. exhibit it's his conviction yes. family okay thank you ma'am may I approach sir yes. thank you Approach your own? Yes, sir. May I approach you, sir? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes. Yes, sir. I'm showing you it's already in evidence. If you see this, it's an exhibit sticker, 17cc, okay? Okay. So and that's what I'm referring to. And this is already in evidence. You see it's State of Georgia versus you, Mr. Murphy? Yes. Okay. And this is a certified copy, meaning it's the last page. And there's a seal, okay? Okay. I'm showing you the fourth page of this exhibit, which is the indictment. Miss Knight, do you have it? I'm sorry? This one.
It's okay, Miss Knight. Thank you, though. So on here, do you see where it says indictment on this section? Yes. And it's State of Georgia versus Mr. Bean, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Prothro. Is that true? Yes. Jeffy Williams not on there? No. And then this is returned in October 1, 2013, meaning that's when the grand jury uh, filed this in open court. Is that what the date says? Yes. Okay. I'd like to show you what has been marked and admitted as 19CC. You see that? Yes. And this was shown to you by the prosecutor as your guilty plea to this case that the jurors are trying. You see that? Yes. Okay. And that's indictment number 22SC183572. True? Yes. And you're familiar with this indictment, fair to say? Yes. And I'm turning the pages to the actual indictment. And this is also certified, or it should be certified on the front electronically. Right? Certification? Yes. All right. And you've seen this before. This is the indictment in our case. It's very lengthy, true? Yes. And your name is on here, right? It's somewhere. It's in alphabetical order. Oh, yes. That's your name at the top? Yes. Jeffrey's name is in here at the bottom. Yes. And then Adrian Bean is not in this indictment. Is that true? No. Nor is Fred Prothro. True? He's not in here either, is he? No. And then I'd like to show you in count one, over at Act 5, 6, and 7. You see the acts here? Yes. In count one. Is that true? Yes. And then I'm turning on to page 15. You see where it says September 11, 2013? Yes. That's the date of the Adrian Bean incident, true? With the car colliding into the wall? Yes. And it charges you, Walter Murphy, with attempted armed robbery, right? Yes. And then in Overt Act 6 of count one, same date of September 11, 2013. Charges you, Walter Murphy, with aggravated yes. assault with a deadly weapon. True? Yes. Count, uh, excuse me, count one, over to Act 7, September 11, 2013. Again, charges you, Walter Murphy, possession of firearm by first offender. Yes. Right? Yes. And in 5, 6, and 7, they all deal with the Derek Dotson. And if I'm going too fast, just say I'm going too fast. But that's the incident involving Adrian Dean, right? Yes. Is Jeffrey Williams charged in over to Act 5, 6, or 7? It just, no, it just say my name. And this was returned not in October 1 of 2013. This indictment was returned on August 5 of 2022, right? Yes. I'm going to leave that with you just for a moment, if I can. Okay. I'm returning, Your Honor, 17CC. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, I want to go to um, a person who the jurors know as Artillian Bennett, okay? Okay. You said you didn't know that name, but you know her as Che. Yes. Is that true? Yes. And just to orient the jurors, you said that she actually did um, babysitting for your daughter. Yes. Is that true? Yes. And that you weren't really friendly with her, but you knew her and you appreciated her babysitting, but you're... Um, your your fiance, wife, child's mother was friends with her. True. Yes. Okay. And you made it clear you never shot a bullet into her wall of her apartment. Is that true? I never did it. And is it true that you were never present ever when somebody put a gun to her face while she's holding her baby? Is no. that true? And you never um, took her watch or not watch, let me think about this. Um, $4,000 in US currency, um, another $100 in US currency, uh, her firearm, her cell phone, maybe some jewelry, and a child's book bag or a child's uh, bag. That never happened, did it? No. Now, um, to your knowledge, Jeffrey Williams never did anything like that, right? No. Now, was there a time or times that you would go over to her home 
And I understand she also lived with um, Micah Anderson. Do you know that person or do you know her boyfriend? Yeah. Ola Playa? Yeah. Okay. Do you know him as Micah Anderson? No. Okay. There were times you'd go over to her home and um, do drugs there. True? Yes. And she was, as well as Mr. Anderson, they, would, they were selling drugs. True? He was selling drugs. I don't know if she was selling That's drugs. That's fine. And do you remember ever going over to um, her home with a, a gentleman known as Buck Buck? Yes. Now, Buck Buck's different than Book, right? We're talking about two different people. Am I right? Yes. And you told the prosecutor that Buck Buck, these are my words, is a, is a thief. He steals a lot. Remember he saying have, that? He have. He have before. He, he used to? Yes. Okay. And he was a drug addict, fair to say? We all were. Yeah. And was there a time that you, I'm not, I'm not saying other people weren't there, but that you, Jeffrey Williams, and Buck Buck, and Archillian Bennett, or Che, and, um, and Ola Playa, or Micah Anderson, and others were doing drugs at Miss Bennett's home, and Buck Buck stole drugs from that home. Did that happen? He stole drugs from a lot of places, so probably, yeah. Objection, Your Honor, says speculation. I stand objection. Do you remember Jeffrey Williams and you calling Miss Bennett or Che and apologizing for Buck Buck stealing the drugs and that Jeffrey repaid the drugs that were stolen? Yes, he, he that happened before. <laughs> now, You talked about the studio and you went a lot. I'm talking about years ago. I'm talking about a decade ago, 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011. I'm, I'm going way back, okay? Okay. You spent a lot of time in, that, in studios, recording studios, didn't you? Yes. And Jeffrey Williams spent even more time in studios, true? Yes. In fact, Jeffrey didn't go home. He would sleep in the studios. Is that true? Yes. And he would be in the studios every day performing music after music, lyric after lyric, song after song. True? Yes. And um, you witnessed some of this, right? You were there. A lot of it, yeah. And when um, Jeffrey was in those studios performing music, eventually he would perform out in the public, right? Yes. I want to show you what I'm marking. As Mr. Williams exhibit number 220A, as in Lisa Alpha through 220XX. Um, then they're individual and I'd like to, with the course permission approach and you just go through each one individually and tell me if you recognize these items, okay? Okay. So we're gonna, there's a lot of them, so we'll just go one at a time, okay? Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? Okay. I'm bringing a clip when you're done, you can clip it, okay? Okay. May I approach you? Yes, sir. I'm handing you, you just stack up. Don't show them to anybody, just go through one at a time. We're gonna go through together and you're gonna make Two piles, if you recognize something, we'll go in pile one. If you don't recognize something, we'll put it aside, okay? Do that now, I just gotta yeah. go. Oh. Let's look at, if you don't mind, look at, um, you see where it says in the upper left, J-W-E-X-H, that stands for exhibit, Jeffrey Williams exhibit, okay? Okay. And then you see where it's a pound sign or a number sign? Yes. And then it says 220A. Do you recognize that poster? The poster, that the photo? The photo. You asking me to answer it or just? Yeah, just yes or no. Do you recognize that? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, we've asked for more. How does he recognize this? What do we need? Do we need more foundation? I would, I would agree with that at this point. So I'll uh, sustain this to foundation. Just, just ask him some more questions. Okay. What's he looking at, do you know, right now? Um, these are 
You want me to say it out loud? The posters. What, what's he? No. What's he looking at in terms of the exhibit? I knew you had oh, a Two two zero A. I apologize. Two two zero A. Yeah. Two two zero A is an elect. That's what. That's what you need to reference when you're. But so the record's clear. Sure. Okay, all right. So he's looking at two two A right now. Okay. And is two two A? I think you said it's a photograph. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. And um, do you recognize that photograph? from seeing it in the past on social media or in other places? Yes. And um, does that photograph accurately depict, depict means accurately show what you remember it showed? Yes. And um, is that photograph the way um, it looked when you've seen it previously? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I move for the admission of two 220A, Mr. Williams exhibit. Any objection? PSA. PSA. It's a photograph. There's no hearsay. I sustain the objection because it's got writing inside of it. I just, I, you, you let me preview uh, already. So. No. This is the poster. Let this, me see it. This is the poster. Let me see it. Well, let me let me ask a question because I think I may have misspoke. Can I see it first, please? Sure. Okay. Are you right. asking me? Let me have a 22A, please, sir. Thank you. May I ask a follow-up question? Hold on one second, Mr. Sheehan. Sure. Here you go, Mr. Uh, Mr. Murphy. All right, go ahead, sir. Do you do you see and and at the very bottom left as well as the very bottom right there's some writings? Yes. Um, is this how you saw the photograph um, with that writing on it previously? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I move for the admission of 220A, Mr. Williams' exhibit. Still need a little more foundation. Is this a, do you recognize this from social media as being a promotional for a promotion of an event of, that Mr. Williams performed at? Um, I just remember seeing it. I don't remember what it was for. Okay. Well, I remember seeing this photo, photo. Okay, and did it have the writing at the bottom? Yes. And look at that writing. Is that the way it looked when you saw it previously? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I move for Mr. Williams 22A. 220A. Any further objection, Mama? Does Mr. Murphy, what social media account he got it from? When he saw it? I'll let you lay a little more foundation. Your Honor, under Henderson, H-E-N-D-E-R-S-O-N versus State, it's 317 Georgia, 66. It's in Division 8. 317 Georgia, 66. It's in Division 8. I'll just stop talking. 2023. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat>
Can I get counsel to come up for a second, please? Mr. Murphy.
me ask you a few questions, sir, okay? Okay. I can't hear it, the court. I said, you know, publish it once that, once that is finished. Once the redaction is finished. Yes. All right. Well, because of that, Your Honor, I don't want to waste time. There'll be a redaction, so I'm going to move on. Mr. Murphy, I'm going to answer another series of questions. We're going to come back to that, okay? Okay. All right. Um, since about 2010, you would have been 19 years of age. Is that true? I think so. Okay, that's fine. I think. All right, let's go back a year before that. 2000, since, I'll just use this. Since about 16, 17, is it fair to say that Jeffrey, you know Jeffrey, to be performing live in front of audiences. Is that true? I thought we were younger than that, but yeah. That's fine. <clears throat> That's fine. And that continued throughout, and it get more momentum, meaning Jeffrey would perform more and more and more as you guys got older. True? Yes. And um, there came a time that you knew, and you've gone to, uh, performances throughout Georgia. Yes. I'm not just talking about Atlanta. I mean, throughout the state of Georgia, right? Yes. Throughout Alabama. Yes. Florida. Yes. South Carolina. Yes. Tennessee. Yes. North Carolina. Yes. Michigan. The whole down south. Every And Michigan would be up north in the Midwest. You remember, I'm not saying you went, but you remember Jeffrey performing there? Detroit, Michigan? I don't know. I know we went. Uh, if you don't know, that's fine. Um, New York. Yeah, I've been to New York. Um, and he performed all over eventually the United States. You're aware of that, right? Yes. And outside the United States, right? Yes. All right. Now, you told the jury that, um, or the prosecutor asked you, how did this argument, this, they called it a beef, between IF and YSL? Remember those type of questions? How did it begin? Yes. And you remember the prosecutor saying to you that you said, that it started with something between Jeffrey and Rich Homie Kwam. Remember that? Yes. And Rich Homie Kwam is another uh, well-known uh, musical artist, rapper. True? Yes. And um, were you aware, do you remember, that in late December of 2014, late December 2014, Jeffrey and Rich Homie Kwam were performing together live? under the name Rich Gang. Yes. Okay. And tell the ladies and gentlemen, jury, what Rich Gang is. It's a record label. Okay. And uh, was Jeffrey a member of Rich Gang? Yes, to my musical group. Yes. And was Rich Homie Kwan a member of Rich Gang? Yes. And was a man named uh, Brian Williams, you may know him, if you don't know him, that's fine, as Birdman, um, owning that record label? Yeah, I think he the owner. I think yeah. he owned it, he made it. <clears throat> Now, did you realize that in January, specifically January 19th of 2015, Rich Homie Kwan and Jeffrey were performing together? January when? Where are you? January 19th, 2015. Um, I don't like remember when, I know they performed a lot together. They got Let a lot of mixtapes together. A lot of mixtapes together, yeah. okay. But let me show you something, see if you, uh, this refreshes your memory.
I'm just going to show you a few of these. John, may I approach? May I approach you? Yes. I'm showing you four exhibits which are marked. Jeffrey Williams exhibit 220CC, collect, collect, DD, Delta Delta, DE, Aaron Aaron, and FF Fox Fox, okay? Okay. I'm just moving that aside so that's good. So. Tell me if. Um, that exhibit, you're looking at 220 CC, correct? Yes. Collect, collect. Um, does that, have you seen that before? You mean the pitch? Yeah. Yes. Does it refresh your memory that Jeffrey played with Rich Gang on December? And you could give us a date. I don't want to, I walked away from it. Does that refresh your memory of the date? Oh, they played December 19th. Of what year? Uh, I don't think it said the year on here. Okay. I don't say the year. Uh -huh. But around the time would have been 2000, maybe 14, 15, one of those years. Well, let's go to the next one. That's DD, correct? Yes. Do you see that Jeffrey performing with Rich Gang? Yes. Does it re refresh your memory that that performance was in Chicago, Illinois, December 26, 2014? I'm refreshing his memory. Okay, you see the document? Yes. Okay, Two, 220, that's DD, right? Yes. Have you seen that before? Yes. Does it refresh your memory? Yes. Did Jeffrey play with Rich Homie Kwan under Rich Gang on December 26, 2014? Yes. How about the next one, which should be Jeffrey Williams exhibit um, EE, Aaron Aaron? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Do you see um, that, and that's that, have you seen that before? You mean like the pick, like the? The flyer, the yes. poster, yeah. And do you see the promotion for uh, New Year's Eve of 2015? Yes. And it's <clears throat> Jeffrey playing with Rich Homie Kwan under, uh, um, and Birdman, do you see that? Yes. And do you see um, that being, as, as you said, it's New Year's Eve, but December 31, 2014? No, this is 15. Right, New Year's Eve. 15. Oh, yeah, it would have been New Year's Eve, so yeah, yes. Miami, Florida, you see that? Yes. And then the next one, you, have you seen that before, that poster, that advertisement? Do you see, do you recognize um, that's 220FF, Fox Fox? You see that? Have you seen that? Um, yeah, I've I seen this one before, but some of these people want on, on, on this flyer, though. That's fine. And is it Jeffrey and Rich Homie Kwan under Rich Gang? Do you recognize that Jeffrey Williams played with Rich Gang and Rich Homie Kwan same, same from that document? Does that refresh your memory of the date? Okay, so here's, here's the you have to ask him a question. Let him refresh his recollection. Look at the document. And then after his memory is refreshed, Have you seen that document before? Yes. And um, does that refresh your memory that Jeffrey played with Rich Gang, January 18, 2015? Yes. He... The question is, do you remember, do you, do you have any recollection of him playing on that particular date? Okay. Do you remember that advertisement and playing on that particular date? He played everywhere with him. Okay. Now, if you don't remember the date, you, you were in a horrible accident when you were in the hospital in the beginning of January 2015, right? Yes. 
but you heard you told the ladies and gentlemen the jury that God forbid Donovan Thomas was killed while in the, while you were in the hospital. Do you I remember? said on the news. Yeah. Okay, and that was on January tenth, two thousand fifteen. I don't remember the date, but I know I seen it. But these items that you just looked at and refresh your memory: Jeffrey Williams two twenty, CC DD EE and FF. They go right through January tenth, two thousand fifteen. Do you realize that? Objection around speculation. That's why is that speculation? Because it goes right through the so, four dates that were. Okay, you testified to this jury that you remember that Jeffrey Williams was playing with Rich Homie Kwan December 18, 2014, excuse me, December 19, 2014, right? Yes. December 26, 2014, right? Yes. That's how lack of personal knowledge, unless he, Mr. Murphy was at any of these events, he doesn't know that's, if they performed. That's not he true. Knows what the flyer says. That's the December 31, 2014. You aware that they played together? Are you aware? Yes. Objection, okay. speculation, and he, see whether or not they actually played the concert. He just said they played together. That's what I, I said, are you aware that they played together? Okay, do you know that they played together on New Year's Eve of 2014 going into 2015? Yes. Okay, and on Jan, same question, January 18, 2015. Yes. Okay, now. Explain to the jury if Jeffrey Williams and Rich Homie Kwan had this big falling out or beef to cause Donovan Thomas's death, potentially. How is it that they were playing together eight days later? If you can explain it to the jury. Objection, <laughs> All right. Let's talk about um, the rodeo tour. You remember that? Yeah. May I approach? You may, sir. May I approach? You may, sir. Murphy, may I approach you? Yes. I'm showing you Mr. Williams exhibit number 19, okay? Okay. And I'm taking back just for you to know the CC. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to hand you that. Take a peek at that and tell me if you recognize Mr. Williams <clears throat> number 19. Okay. Do you recognize that? Yes. And how do you recognize that? Uh, it's the, all the tour dates, the hotels and stuff. It's and you, everything about the tour. Okay. And is that the tour? Uh, do you know the name of that tour? <coughs> the Rodeo Tour. And did you go on that tour? Yes. Or at least part of it? Yes. 
Your Honor, I move for the admission of Mr. Williams number 19. Is it 19, sir? Correct. Any objection to uh, Jeffrey Williams 19? Yes, here, sir. Let me see it, please. Um, can you all approach for a second?
May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. I'm rehanding you who's at the bench of the court, uh, Mr. Lady Governor Magnuson. Um, you recognize the um, exhibit number 19. Would you do me a courtesy and turn to the third page? Okay. And on that page, I'm not looking at the exhibit. Is there a list of uh, cities and dates? Yes. Okay, we're on the same page. Um, did you go to, did you go on that tour, part of it? Yes. And um, did you start out on that tour? What do you mean, like when I began? Yes. I can't really remember, but I, I think I did, though, if okay. I'm not mistaken. And was it on a plane? Was it was it on a, um, what type of transportation was it? Oh, no, yeah, I did start. Um, we left on the bus, and then I think we met him in another state. He flew. And who's him? Legit. Okay. Now, um, by looking at the third page of Mr. Williams' number 19, just look at it by yourself. Um, are you familiar with, and did you understand those to be the tours, the cities and the stops where performances by Jeffrey was going to be? Yes. All right. Your Honor, I move for, and I'll, I'll link it up later um, with other witnesses, but I move for the admission of Mr. Williams, number 19, the outside, the back, front cover, back cover, and page three. Yes. No objections to the front page and page three only. Go okay. I want to ask you a question, okay? Okay. All right. Um, describe the bus to the ladies and gentlemen jury that you're talking about. A tour bus. And when you say a tour bus, some people may not have ever been, had the privilege of being on one. Can you explain what that is to a jury? It's a bus. Uh, you go to different states on for, I mean, different reasons, but it got like a bus, like a tour bus driver. It got like probably... The one we had probably had like 10, 11 beds on it. It got like a bedroom in the back and stuff like that. Uh, did it have sinks and toilets and things yeah, like that? Yeah, toilet, refrigerator. Running water? All that. Okay. And um, where did the tour, was the tour with another artist? Do you remember who that was? Yes. Who was the other artist? Travis Scott. And is he also a well-known to you? Is he a well-known uh, musical performer, rap? Yes. All right. Did he just play at the Super Bowl? Objection, All right. Where did, and tell the ladies and gentlemen the date, you could use that, obviously it's in evidence. Um, where did the tour start and what city? Where did the tour start and what date? Uh. <clears throat> Saturday, February 20, no, February 15th to the 28th, to okay. the 28th or something. And um, what city was that? St. Anna, California. All right. And if you can just go down and read, if you don't mind, read to the jurors the date and the city, just in order, um, from Mr. Williams' number 19, page 3. Uh, Sunday, March 1st. Through the 15th, yeah. Santa Ana, California, that's the show day. Monday, March 2nd through the 15th, Tucson, tu I think they were there, Tucson, Arizona, that's the show day. I remember that one. Uh, Tuesday, March 3rd, March 3rd through the 15th, travel day. When you say through the 15th, is that 2015? Oh, that would it might be, yeah. I think that what it is. Oh, that's my fault. Yeah, because it keeps saying 15. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. But, I'm uh, sorry, I interrupted you. March 3rd. Okay, so yeah, the, the March 15th. 3rd, 2015. Yeah. All right, that's the travel date. And then <laughs> Wednesday, March the 4th, 2015, uh, Denver, Colorado. That's the show date. Thursday, March the 5th, 2015, travel date. Uh, Friday, March the 6th, 2015, Milwaukee, a show date. 
Saturday, March 7th, 2015, Chicago, Illinois. That's the show day. I don't know what that means, though. But it's a show day, though. And then Sunday, March the 8th, <clears throat> Chicago, Illinois. That's a show day. Monday, March 9th, 2015, Detroit, Michigan. A show day. Tuesday, March 10th, 2015, Toronto, Can Canada. We got another word right there, but I don't know what that means. Canada, TS show date. And then Wednesday, March 11th, 2015, Buffalo, New York, a show date. Thursday, March the 12th, 2015, New York, New York, a show date. Friday, March 13, 2015, New York, New York, a travel date. Saturday, March 14, 2015, Philadelphia, show date. Sunday, March 15, 2015, Washington, D.C., show date. Monday, March 16, 2015, North, North Fork. I don't know what, I think that's Virginia though, I think. Yes, show date, Tuesday, March 17, 2015. Charlotte, North Carolina, show date. Wednesday, March the 18, 2015, Atlanta, Georgia, show date. Thursday, March 19th, New Orleans, show date. Friday, March 20th, Austin, Texas. <laughs> I don't know what that means though, TBA? I don't know what that means. And then it says Saturday. Say TBA? Yeah. I okay. don't know what that means. Well, I, I can't necessarily tell you, but um, that's okay. If you read TBA, that's that's fine. Okay. Saturday, March 21st, 2015, August, Austin, Texas, TBA. Sunday, March 22nd, 2015, San Marcos, Texas, show date. Monday, March 23rd, 2015, Houston, Texas, show date. Tuesday, March 24th, Dallas, Texas, show date. <clears throat> Wednesday, March 25th, travel date. Thursday, March 26th, Phoenix, Arizona, show date. Friday, March 27th, San Diego, California, show date. Saturday, 28th, Saturday, March 28th, I mean. Los Angeles, California, show date. Sunday, March 29th, San Francisco, California, show date. Monday, March 30th, 2015, travel date. Tuesday, March 31st, Seattle, Washington, I think that's what it is. That's right. Show date, Wednesday, April 1st, 2015, Portland, I don't know what that what, that, what they mean though. Show date, Is Thursday. A yeah. Okay. Thursday. You heard of a place, uh, Oregon? Oregon, I ain't no know where I Okay. Thursday, April the 2nd. <clears throat> I don't know, what is it? Boys, ID, LD? Boise? Yeah, Boise. Okay. ID or LD, show date, that's a show date though. Friday 13th, 2000, I mean, Friday, April 3rd, 3rd, 2015, travel home. Okay. Now, that was a lot of tour dates within that month plus period. Is that true? Yes. And to your knowledge, that's Jeffrey's schedule for years before that. Is that true? Objective Jeffrey performed multiple times a week. I'm not saying throughout the United States, but throughout Georgia and the Southeast years before that, true? Yes, by the time he was used to it. Now, um, you you were um, invited to go on that tour. You were on the tour bus, right? <clears throat> yes. And um, you had certain obligations, like sell merchandise, merch. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. And you were there to assist, carry things, whatever whatever yeah, needed to be done. I couldn't do much, though, because my, I have my accident. But you were there to enjoy yourself as well as 
assist to make this a successful tour. True. Exactly. Yes. And there were business managers on the tour bus, right? Yes. And there were a lot of different, I'm not asking you to know, but Travis Scott's people were there. All true? Yes. Okay. And this was a lot of work, right? Yes. Now, there came a period of time, and it should be March 26, 2015, if you look at your, at Mr. Williams, number 19, mm -hmm. the third page mm -hmm. in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. You were yes. actually sent home. Is that fair to say? Yes. And you were sent home because I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm not accusing you of anything. But there was a belief that you and others may have been committing crime. Is that true? Yes. And Jeffrey again told you, I can't put up with this. Objection here, sir. Is that true? You were told that you had to leave because of that. True? Objection here, sir. That's why you were asked to leave or put on a plane to fly back to Atlanta, right? Objection still here, sir. You knew, you knew that was the reason that you were um, put on a plane to leave. Objection is still based on his side. Goes to his state of mind. Question. You understood, you. The re Why was the reason you were sent home? Tell the jurors. I stole some money. Okay. Now, to your knowledge, did did Jeffrey repay that store owner who lost the money? Yes. Now you told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that Jeffrey, and to your knowledge, Don, I call him Mr. Donovan Thomas, but you referred to him as not, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. All right. They were friendly, true? To my knowledge, yes. And your child's or children's mother is also related to Donovan Thomas. Yeah, they ain't blood, but they call each other cousin. Because they were from the same area and known each other their whole lives. Yes. They were close. Yes. And you had no problem with Donovan Thomas, right? No. You liked him? Yes. <clears throat> now, before going on that tour bus, so it's after you're in the hospital and before the tour bus, you could use that. It should be the, uh, you know, in March, February, March, the end of February, March, when you go on the tour bus. Um, Jeffrey already made it known to you that um, he was not happy with you, right? Jeffrey wasn't speaking much with you before this tour. Is that true? We wasn't speaking at all, so I had my accident. In fact, he separated himself from you. I'm not saying, I mean, yes, that's it's true. true. Then when you had your accident, then he, um, he reached out to you and hoped that you feel better. <laughs> true. Yes, he kind of see me. Yeah, hoping he, he was bringing well wishes, whatever the right word. He was yes. hoping that you recover. Yes. And he allowed you to come on this tour, right? Yes. You've never experienced anything like that before, have you? Driving no, around the United that was, States? That was one of the best, well, however long it was, but one of the best times I had. And you were there to potentially get a job with YSL record label, right? Yes. If you could show that you would work hard you and be an asset, an asset means be a contributor. Yes. True? Yes. <clears throat> that didn't work out, did it? No. I think you didn't get that job. No. And in fact, after that tour, again, Jeffrey wasn't speaking with you. True? Yes. In fact, since before your accident in 2000, sometime 2013, until your accident, Jeffrey hardly spoke with you. True? Yes. And then... Um, after your accident and going on this tour, when you were sent home, Jeffrey hardly spoke with you. True? Yes. In fact, the last time and the only time that you really spoke with Jeffrey since being sent home from that tour was on the day that you were arrested on July 15, 2015. True? Yes. And Jeffrey was arrested that same day for terroristic threats at the mall. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you remember seeing him in the Fulton County Jail? Yeah. 
Do you remember what he told you? Yeah. I asked, do you, do you remember what he told you? Did he tell you something? In yes. the Fulton County Jail? Yes. How did you take it, what he told you? Objection would be based on, on his testimony. It's effect on the listener. I don't. I'm confused. You asked, I'm lost now. What Jeffrey told you, how did you take that? How did you understand it? Wait, what he told me when I said him when we was locked up? Yeah. What did you do as a result of what Jeffrey told you? Uncle, can you ask that again? I can't hear you. So what did you do, if anything, as a result of what Jeffrey told you? I, I took it upon myself right then to start doing better. <clears throat> Since that day in the Fulton County Jail, July 15, 2015, have you spoken with Jeffrey Williams? Ask that again? Yeah. Since the day that you were locked up, I'm not saying you remember the day, the day that Jeffrey was arrested for the terroristic threat at the mall in the Fulton County Jail, after that day, have you spoken with Jeffrey Williams at all? No. Did Jeffrey Williams ever, directly or indirectly, pay for your lawyer? No. Did Jeffrey Williams ever, directly or indirectly, put money on your account in jail or prison? No. Did Jeffrey Williams ever directly or indirectly ever bond you out of jail? No. Now, the day you were arrested on the Dexter Montgomery warrant, July 15, 2015. And if you don't remember that date, that's fine. But you were arrested outside of Jeffrey's home. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Now, the prosecutor was asking you about that, that you were arrested. You were never inside Jeffrey's home, right? No. You actually heard about Jeffrey being arrested for the mall terroristic threat incident, and you came to Jeffrey's home to see what happens, right? I heard it was his house, so I, I came. And then while there, a police officer recognized you, asked you if you're DK, you said yes, and they had a warrant. God bless you. They had a warrant for you. True? I don't think they asked me who I was. They just threw me on the ground. Okay. The police threw you on the ground. Uh -huh. And you were arrested for the Dexter Montgomery warrant, right? Yes. The prosecutor asked you, since you um, told on Nard, his name, do you know his real name? Demise McMullen, do you know that name? No. Okay, you know Nard? Yeah. The prosecutor asked you, since you told on Nard, did um, Jeffrey cut you off? Remember something like that? Did he ever speak to you again? Yes. She asked you about other people too, I'm just limited to Jeffrey. Yes. The truth is Jeffrey Williams was not talking with you before that. True? That's true. I want to talk with you about um, the bus, the tour bus of um, a performer known as Lil Wayne. His yeah. name is Dwayne Carter. I want to okay. ask you about that, okay? Okay. Now, you didn't shoot that bus, true? You had nothing to do with shooting that no, bus. No, I didn't. You know that bus, or at least you heard on the news, was shot, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have any information to supply to this jury that Jeffrey Williams had anything to do with the plan, the encouragement to shoot that bus? No. Let me ask you if he knows. It's a supposed conspiracy. Tell the ladies and gentlemen the jury. No. In fact, on the day that this bus, tour bus, excuse me, of Mr. Carter, Lil Wayne, was uh, fired upon, you know, Jeffrey was in Louisiana performing that day. I heard that. Okay. 
Now, do you know whether Jeffrey was extremely upset that that bus was fired upon of the little wing? Okay. Just for our speculation as to what Mr. Wynn said. You told the police, according to the prosecutor's questions of you, that um, Jeffrey was mad at you because you didn't uh, ensure that his sister, Dolly, you know, you know who Dolly is? Yes. <clears throat> you know her real name's Alexis? Yes. Okay. Um, was, was at the club. Do you remember something like that? Do you remember being asked that question? Yes. And you said something like it, it, Jeffrey was mad at you because she was at that club, remember, or something like that. Remember? Yes. The truth is Jeffrey never asked you to protect Dolly, did he? No. He never asked you to protect his mother, did he? No. He had private security. This is 2015. Do you remember the bus shooting was April 26, 2015? I think that's when it was. Uh. Do, do you remember it being the date of the birth of Trontavia Stevens or Tick? You remember the same day? Okay, yeah, that probably that sound about right. <clears throat> By that time, Jeffrey is a celeb super celebrity, right? Yes. He had his own security. True? Yes. Now Jeffrey constantly, just like you, just like you said. Well, I'll just talk about you. Okay. Forget about my question. You said earlier, when you allowed me to ask you questions, that you never would want anybody, especially your children, to grow up the way you grew up. Remember saying something like that? Yes. You never forgot where you came from, did you? No. You never forgot those struggles? No. And you're doing everything you can now to work every day to help support lawfully your family, true? Yes. And you know that Jeffrey never forgot that there's other people there living in poverty? Objective speculation is so Do you know if, whether Jeffrey has given opportunities to countless people in poverty to get lawful jobs? Yes. I wanna talk with you about um, Jeffrey, if you know, did you observe, would he let people stay at his house if they didn't have a place to live? Of course. Did you know whether Jeffrey would allow people to use his cars if they needed a car for transportation? He let me use it a lot of time. And did you even have to ask him? No, but I would though, but no, you don't have to. And do you know whether Jeffrey would rent cars for people who said that they needed a car? because they couldn't rent it themselves. Yeah, he did it before. From approximately July 15, 2015, I'm using the day you were arrested outside of Jeffrey's home, okay? Until approximately January 20, January 22, January 2022, you were um, imprisoned in the Fulton County Jail, as well as the state of Georgia prison system. Is that true? Yes. And um, that's serving the sentence for the Dexter Montgomery shooting, as well as it ran concurrent, meaning together, you know what concurrent means? Yes. Um, with the Adrian Bean incident. Is that true? Yes. You, you wiped out both those cases? Yes. <clears throat> or resolved, I guess is a better word. I want to um, show you If it's okay, um, I just need to find it. The Dexter Montgomery. Yeah, I may approach you. I'm a court for it. It might be in front. May I approach the um, yes, sir. May I approach you, sir? Yes. Well, you tell me, are you looking at um, the conviction for Dexter Montgomery? I don't know. I know that she said 18 is 18. You see a 16 
No. Oh, they are this here, right? May I approach you, sir? Yes, sir. You want to take a look at it with you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at it already in evidence, States Exhibit 18CC, collect, collect, Charlie, Charlie. You see that? Yes. Okay. This is the indictment. In diamond number 15, SC 138234. You see that? Yes. And it's State of Georgia versus Mr. Murphy. That's you, right? Yes. And this was returned October 13, 2015? Yes. And you see your signature here? Yes. With the Honorable Jacoby Hudson signature, if you recognize it? Yes. And do you see here... Um, that this deals with the April 12, 2015 incident involving Mr. Um, Montgomery. You see all that? Yes. And there's multiple <clears throat> counts, right? Yes. Right. Jeffrey Williams is not charged in this indictment, is he? No. Okay. Then on... No, I'm just clipping it because um, the staple came out. On 19 CC, you see this? Yes. And this is your guilty plea in our case that the jury is trying? Yes. Okay. And I'd like to show you in count one, over at act. Thirty. Do you see here with Demise McMullen? You know that gentleman's nard. Yes. As well as you, you see your name? Yes. On April 12, 2015? Yes. And it's attempted murder on Dexter Montgomery, you see that? Yes. And then over at Act 31, same two people, Mr. McMullen and you? Yes. Same date, 4 12 15, which is April 12, 15? Yes. Attempted murder? Yes. There's Mr. Davis. Then on over at Act 32, again, Mr. Mc. Mullen and you, same date, same incident involving Mr. Montgomery, right? Yes. Same thing for Overt Act 33, same date, you and Mr. McMullen, right? Yes. Same thing for Overt Act 34, same date, 4 12 15, possession of firearm by convicted felon for you? Yes. And then same date, 4 12 or April 12, 2015, Mr. Demise McMullen, possession of firearm by convicted felon, you see that? Yes. And then same date, uh, over at Act 36, April 12, 2015, Mr. McMullen and you, participation in criminal street gang activity, you see that? Yes. And then over at Act 37, April 15th, excuse me, that's another date, that's April 15th. So we're done with the April 12th, Mr. Montgomery, right? Yes. This, this indictment was returned August 5, 2022, correct? Yes. Was Jeffrey Williams charged in any of those over that? No. Right. Now, I want you to look at the next over that in count one, which is over that 39. Yes. You see April 26, 2015, Jimmy Winfrey is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Um, concerning Dwayne Carter, a.k.a. Lil Wayne. Yes. By shooting at a bus. Yes. And then... Over at Act 40, which is also April 26, 2015, charges Jimmy Winfrey, participation in criminal street gang activity. Yes. Again, um, on the same date, you see that? Yes. You see uh, Over at Act 41 in Count 1, goes to a different event, right? Yes. Is Jeffrey Williams charged with anything in the indictment that the jury is 
considering concerning the tour bus shooting on April 26, 2015. No. Mr. Murphy. Um, you explained that you, Mr. Williams, Mr. Stevens, Trantavia Stevens, and I heard sometimes yes, sometimes no, Mr. Crenshaw or Mondo, or Mondo Crenshaw, or yeah. Mondo, you know that person? Yes. That you all um, created the name YSL. Remember that? Yes. And you said that it started out as a um, record label. Yes. Jeffrey wanted a record label because people like Lil Wayne had a record label, right? Yeah, we all wanted a record label. And Jeffrey started to sing in his songs about YSL, right? Yes. And as Jeffrey's popular, he was popular by the time that YSL was being used, right? By the time you guys created you being Mr. Stevens, Jeffrey, yourself, maybe or maybe not, Mondo. Uh -huh. Jeffrey was a popular artist. Yes, right? way before we came up with YSL, he was already. He was already booming, right? In Atlanta, yeah, in Georgia. And Jeffrey um, would then sing about YSL. Are you familiar with that in songs? Yes. <clears throat> and when he did that, people adopted or started to say YSL and they would sing about it too in their rap songs. Is that true? Yes. If he knows it. And are you aware that people would put tattoos on their body of YSL? Yes. And are you aware that people would have Jeffrey's face, his image tattooed to their body? Yes. And you said something like at some point it just got out of hand. YSL was just everywhere. Yes. Remember that? Yes. When we say everywhere, it's not just talking about Cleveland Avenue or Atlanta, Georgia. You're talking about all throughout the United States and the world, right? Yes. People were on the internet posting about YSL yes. from other countries, right? <laughs> yes. It was growing. Yeah, right? it was. It was like man, I never seen before. And some people used it like Jeffrey, for music, right? Objection, if he knows. Objection. Well, let's talk about that. You know that Jeffrey incorporated YSL? Do you know that? Yeah, I later found that out. I didn't know that then, but That's fine. he did. You know that YSL has employees? Yeah. You know that it has, it's part of a publicly traded company? You know what I mean by that? And if you don't, just say uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Do you know it's been bought by another record label? You familiar with that? Objection, I'm, speculation, he doesn't know. I stand the objection. Are you familiar Jeffrey signed with another record label at all? A major label, yeah. A major label, yeah. right. And there are people who work on that. Lawyers, right? Work for the label? Yeah. Business managers, right? Yes. Accountants, correct? I'll yeah, all right. <laughs> and people who run studios, own studios, and the like, right? Yes. There's other people who use YSL, and they may commit crime. Right? Yes. Oh, that's a speculation. I stand the objection. They've been talking about it the entire time. I stand the objection as to form, Mr. Stewart. You can rephrase. And does the part that includes <coughs> criminality, YSL, does that have anything to do with Jeffrey Williams? Objection, Your Honor. That'll be speculation and I stand legal the, conclusion. I sustain the objection. It's not a legal conclusion. He's allegedly a member of a conspiracy. <laughs> I sustain the objection, sir. What you pled guilty to, YSL, and, and announced YSL is a criminal street gang. That was part of your guilty plea, right? Yes. Are there multiple facets to YSL? Are there different, YSL different things to different people? True. Subject and speculation. If he knows, I stand the objection.
Do you know, do you know personally that YSL is also a lawful entity? Lawful. Um, can you dumb it down? I don't understand what you... Is it, is YSL, um, people in YSL not committing crime? Of course, yes. Okay. And you said earlier that people in YSL could be bloods, members of Criminal Street Gang bloods, right? Yes. They could be members of Criminal Street Gang crip, right? Yes. And I heard you say they could be Muslim. Yes. Right. And I heard you say it could be lawful people, right? Like a fan. Fans. Yeah. Business managers, right? Yes. Performers. Yes. Or artists, right? Yes. You were asked about um, the tattoo, certain tattoos on your body, but you remember the prosecutor asked you about Haiti? Yes. And you explained that Jeffrey's, one of Jeffrey's daughters is named Haiti, true? Yes. Um, tell the ladies and gentlemen jury whether Haiti is a location where you grew up. That was a nickname for a location we grew up. I may have one moment. You may, sir. Mr. Murphy, by testifying today, you have to testify truthfully, right? Yes. You're under oath? Yes. And you have a plea agreement where if the prosecutors believe that you did not testify truthfully, you can be revoked. Yes. And revoked means that your probation can be pulled away from you and you could go back and be incarcerated, right? Yes. And up to, I believe, nine years. And if I'm wrong, I don't, I don't know. I think it's more. It might be nine. It's a considerable amount of time, right? It's something I want to happen. <laughs> Second, you may, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about some lunch? Among other things. <laughs> All right, um, how about we do this? Why don't we recess and come back at two, two o'clock and um, we'll see where the rest of the afternoon leads at this point in time. Um, Mr. Murphy, we'll see you back at two, okay? Okay. All right? Okay. Okay, so don't discuss your testimony except the attorneys in this case, all right? Okay. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll see you at two o'clock, all right? All rise.
right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad to see you guys at, um, at 2 o'clock.
Uh, okay, is Mr. Murphy outside? where he's speaking and the portion in the beginning where he gives his name um, is the only portion that um, identifies him as who he is. The reason the state believes that it is important to play the portion um, prior to the start of the proffer is um, for the effect that those words would have had on Mr. Murphy given his testimony on cross-examination. He was asked extensively about um, the, being in jail. He was asked about um, his um, trusting of his attorney and things like that and what his attorney may have said or done. Um, and at the very beginning of the proffer, Your Honor, we have the guidelines being set forth for the agreement. Um, and essentially, um, inside the proffer, um, Mr. Murphy is being told that um, they were getting ready to do a proffer. It's a final plea that Mr. Murphy is in handcuffs um, and that if he needed a break uh, to speak with his attorney, he could. Also, he was explained that um, the proffer agreement was, it meant that, that he was going to speak to the state. Um, there were promises that were being exchanged. Um, the promise was that everything he told the state on that date would not be used against him, that the goal of the proffer is for Mr. Murphy to have been truthful, that you cannot, he could not get into any more trouble by anything he said that day. Whatever evidence that the state had against Mr. Murphy had already been served. Whatever statements that he may have made in the past prior to that proffer were fair game still, and the state could use those against him if the case went forward. But on that day, which happened to have been the day that he entered a, a guilty plea, uh, on that day, the state promised that it would not use anything um, that Mr. Murphy said against him with two exceptions. In exchange for the promise, uh, Mr. Murphy was asked to be completely honest, to be candid, to be truthful. Do not try to minimize your involvement. Don't try to minimize other people's involvement. Just tell us the truth because the state is gauging how honest or how remorseful you are. And this is going to help the state determine if we can give him a negotiated offer for something less than what's already been offered right now. Um, so the only two exceptions um, were that these statements to be uh, used against you say that you decide to cooperate with us. He has not made that decision and the state did not offer anything yet, but say in the future, uh, Mr. Murphy did decide to cooperate with the state and took the stand or he wanted to take stand in his own defense. He had a right to testify on his own behalf or to not testify. But if he got on the stand and said something different than what he said in the proffer, the state would let the jurors know that um, one of these statements has to be a lie. And it was explained that that's called impeachment. So um, the prosecutor said that um, he would tell the jury that um, I don't know which one's a lie, but he said two completely different things. And it's going to be up to you to gauge whether or not the witness is lying. And um, most likely he's lying to you if he says something different in court. So it was explained to Mr. Murphy that we can impeach his credibility with the words in the proffer. And it was explained that the other time that the state could use it against him would be in something called perjury. Say um, that Mr. Murphy had said, something different when he's on the stand under oath and he says something different than what um, he said to the uh, prosecutor and to the investigators during the proffer agreement and that is material. He was it explained that materials means very important, something that makes or breaks the case. So he was told, say if you say something inconsistent that is very important, not only would I impeach you and tell the jurors, hey, don't believe him. If that's important, I would also 
uh, bring new charges against you for perjury. That's a completely new felony. That would be a new case. But this is the only time that I'm going to use this against you. If you lie, if you're just completely honest with me and tell the truth, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, at that point, um, he was asked whether he understood everything that the state was saying. And then uh, Mr. Murphy said, uh, yeah, you said you want to help me, you know, a lower plea like an offer. Um, and he asked, what are they offering now? Um, the prosecutor told him that the offer at that moment is a non-negotiated offer, that um, he is recommending that the court sentence Mr. Murphy to 30 years with 20 to serve in the balance on probation. And that's with no negotiations. Um, with Mr. Murphy talking to the state on that day, it would help the prosecutor to see where Mr. Murphy stands, how remorseful he was, and whether he would be truthful if he was put on the stand. Mr. Murphy asked, so that's the that that's the plea that offer that you're being that you're offering is that the plea if I that I get if I lose at trial the prosecutor explained no you don't the judge will sentence you to whatever he deems appropriate or she deems appropriate the sentence range is anywhere from 1 to 30 for attempted murder um, and it was explained to him that he was charged with 14 counts that the court could do whatever it wanted to do and could <laughs> sentence him consecutively um, and that he could be sentenced for a number of years. Um, he was told that if he lost at trial, the state would be recommending um, that he serve 30, that he be sentenced to 30 to serve 20. Um, but uh, he was told that from speaking with the state on that date, if it was determined that he would be helpful, then he would offer something different and that it was still up to Mr. Murphy whether he wanted to take it or not. It was explained that um, the state might offer you something a lot better, um, but you might say, no, I don't want to take it. I didn't do it. I want to take my chances at trial. And you can still reject the state's offer. Ms. Love, how long is this proper? Oh, Your Honor, it's the one that's already been entered um, by the right, defendant. What is it that minutes. you're trying to ask me, other than the fact that- I just wanted to put Mr. that on Mr. the Mr. Child of Eminem's involvement. He's speaking. I don't want his name to be, we bleeped out his name. We completely took out his name. Um, but we did want the admonitions that were given to Mr. Chada, and I thought it was important that the court heard those. That does, um, that does, uh, those are the admonitions that I was able to complete telling the court what they are. Uh, uh, sorry. And, uh, Your Honor. I'm sorry. So, you got the computer open. Yes. So, Your Honor, given that we, um, we just wanted to make the court aware that we were going to put on, given his cross-examination testimony, um, the video version of defendant Shannon Stillwell number nine, I believe, which is the proffer. And I believe previously the concern was that Mr. Chada not be identified, but, um, and I think previously they had talked about taking out the first 12 minutes, but the first 12 minutes <clears throat> consist of much more than just Mr. Chada's name and Mr. Chada is speaking throughout the proffer. So I don't believe that the voice was a problem, um, but rather his identification. And also at 34 minutes and 10 seconds through 34 minutes and 50 seconds, um, where you can visually see Mr. Chada, that portion will not be shown to the jury either. Your Honor, so basically, um, we had a hearing about this last week. We all discussed it. You ordered the state to do something. Instead, they did what they wanted to do. That's that's basically where we're at. I'm going to omit the first 12 minutes, too. That's what I told you last week. Your Honor, would we be allowed to ask him? No, Was he, he told won't. certain things? I told, I told you that last week. We could have had this discussion earlier. I'm going to admit it. When I tell you, I told you last week, we're not... Look, we've been taking up 15 minutes in this. You said, and I told you last week, because Ms. Hilton said she's going to take out the 12 minutes. We're going to take them out. Your Honor, given what was said on cross, and given that I did provide this to the defense, I sent them the, the copy with the with Mr. Chada's name redacted. But you changed materially what I told you from last week. You're telling me something that, that you think is relevant at this point in time. I'm excluding it. That's it. 
Your Honor, we're only asking that the court allow us to put it in because it does it does impact how the jury would should consider what Mr. Murphy's testimony is today when compared to what he told the, the detectives in that hearing. He was made promises and on cross he was asked about what he was promised. He was asked about the jail. He was asked about a lot of things on cross that at this point would make very relevant and very material the portion of the um, video that he is told the terms of his proffer agreement, Your Honor. That is the reason we are begging the court because this whole endeavor is a search for the truth that the jury be allowed to see what Mr. Murphy was aware of before he made the statements that he made because of what he said on cross-examination, which is different than what he said in the proffer. Had Mr. Murphy agreed to meet with us like he Mr. did? Mr. Sharp? I believe that changes the equation, though, Be between what you and Mr. Steele have, have asked already in terms of that. Your Honor, it, it didn't change the equation. Respectfully, it didn't change the equation at all. The concern with the first 12 minutes with Mr. Chada Jimenez, uh, the, the jurors have heard Mr. Chada Jimenez's voice. But you opened um, the door as to him. We, we didn't, respectfully, Your Honor, we didn't open the door. We cross-examined the witness, and, and quite frankly, I didn't open any doors. I, I opened windows and brought in light to this courthouse and, and actually took the time to allow the witness to review his statement and then was able to have a, mm -hmm. a, a, a normal, competent state uh, discussion with what happened. Now, Your Honor, I'll also point out, while we're talking about what the state didn't do, they, didn't, they also were ordered to take out the state comments by Mr. Hudson in the in the uh, proffer, which are extremely prejudicial against uh, the defendants, including Mr. Williams, and they didn't omit that either. So, I, you know, I, we have to double and triple check to make sure the judge's order, your, your honor's orders are followed. And that's quite frankly, not the best use of our time. And it's not fair to us. Your Honor, that's not true. What Mr. Um, what Mr. Sharp asked for at letter L was um, that Mr. Chada, in this portion of the statement, uh, if this portion is a statement, um, will have assumed a dual role in this case, serving as prosecutor and defense attorney. He was previously introduced to this jury. Um, the contents can be elicited without revealing the identity of the assistant district well, attorney who was conducting well, we said the we would take out the first 12. No, I, I am. I'm just pointing out that that um, what Mr. Shart has said regarding not opening the door is insincere. If he had just said something about um, if, if Mr. Murphy had testified consistently and Mr. Sh uh, Shart had not elicited testimony, essentially that Mr. Murphy just wanted to get back and uh, to his family and he would have cut off his arm, he would have done anything. Um, that he could, and if the statements that he gave to Mr. Steele were not inconsistent, and the statements that he gave to Mr. Sharp were not inconsistent with what he said in the proper agreement, we would be in a different place. But the problem is, is that Mr. Murphy has um, agreed to speak with counsel for Mr. Steelwell and refused to speak with counsel for the state so that we could even go over anything with him. So this notion that we were trying to hide it is false um, from Mr. Murphy. He refused to speak with us further until he got on the stand. He said, you can talk to me when I get on the stand. And so that's what we had to do. And the information that was given and elicited while he was on the stand makes necessary that first portion of this proffer where the terms of the proffer are laid out. And so at that point, it allows the jury to adequately and properly weigh the difference in the two statements and why there would be a difference in the two statements. Who's giving the terms of the proffer? That is Mr. Chada Jimenez. His voice is heard not just in the first 12 minutes, his voice is heard throughout the proffer. It's and still there was a never a there was never it's a still a problem. It's still You're, a problem. It really is. Yana, there was never but a no, record. because here's the thing. You all chose to put this case together with Mr. Chada Jimenez. In that particular tape, I, I think he got problems Your with Honor, it. You're gonna have to live with it. So I'm gonna, Honor, I'm gonna may, exclude it. If I may, Your I'm Honor. gonna exclude it. That's my ruling. Your Honor. I've excluded it. That's my ruling. You've got some ethical and other issues bringing that. Even though 
even though you, you, you may have some issues with Mr. Murphy, I understand that, but this is not what you're going to be able to present in front of this jury. Your Honor, the state had the privilege as it related to Mr. Chada and him. Are you going to keep arguing with me or what? Yeah. I ruled. We are not going to cover the first 12 minutes. I told that to Ms. Hilton. She said she was going to agree to that. Yeah, you might have kind of, you might have kind of, you can still ask him questions. You got a, you got a written, pro, you have, do you have a transcript of the proffer? Yes. Then use that. That was what I was asking. Use you. that. You. We'll I don't that. have any issue with that. I told you that. Okay, we'll go past that. Thank you. And Your Honor, as it relates to Mr. Sharp's um, comments to the court about what Mr. Hudson said, actually, Judge, that was as it related to the August interview. There was never anything in this motion in limited. So we're not, so we're not, you're not Mr. making Hudson. Mr. Hudson's statements? Because I think we're supposed to exclude those as well. No, you only said to exclude the ones in the August statement where they left the room and only Mr. Hudson and Mr. Murphy yes. were in there. Yes. Okay. So, no. There was All right. Yes, sir. Your Honor, I asked for um, any non-testifying person. That's was what I asked you in my motion, not to be allowed to get in via recording. They're not testifying. Attorney Hudson is not testifying. The state has it in this exhibit. I don't know the number from 46 to 46. 30, and I'm strenuously objecting. In addition to that... Um, Who's that? 46, what part of the... Mr. Hudson is the attorney for Mr. Murphy. He's in, a, he's in the proffer. What There's is Detective Gaither, Detective Dennis, prosecutor at that time, um, Jimenez, Jimenez mm -hmm. Mr. Murphy in handcuffs. Those are the people I believe are there. Mr. Hudson says... We are not, he gives multiple statements, but we are not discussing Jeffrey Young Thug Williams. I can't cross-examine him on why he would say it. Yeah. So I want that out respectfully. That and you granted it. That needs to be excluded. What else? We can take the, that out, Your Honor, but this is the recording that has already been admitted as evidence has that in there. What? The, the, it has that portion. Hold on, hold on. You mean the proffer? But we can mute that part. We'll mute that part. 46... We have it from 4602 to 4622. We can mute that part. In addition, Your Honor, at 2750 through 29, Detective Gaither is telling Mr. Murphy, Fatty is not in the car. Mr. Murphy is the only one who identifies Fatty as being in the car. And um, that's not what her... But Detective Murphy, I mean, Detective... Um, Gaither. Gaither is testifying, though, isn't he? And not only that, it's a Connor, woman, but, but I believe and she's testifying. Isn't she so. Is. so she and can be crossed only, on that. And not only that, Judge, but Detective Gaither, <clears throat> she is pushing against Mr. Murphy and telling him that she knows Fatty is not in the car. Mr. Murphy consistently says that is Fatty in the car. So there is nothing about that portion that should be a problem. He maintains that even when she pushes back against him, and, and that's, that's a, the kind of thing. Well, the the that the. the, the, the Detective Gaither's statement, I'm not going to exclude that. That's a weight versus efficiency. If she, especially she's going to testify. So, I'll, so I'll, I'll disallow that. I mean, in terms of in terms of it doesn't need to be cut out. What else, sir? Um, Your Honor, in addition, I am moving to exclude the entirety of the recording for two reasons. One under 24-6-613. And, Your Honor, that's in uh, Division B, as in Barry, Bravo, C as in Colette, Charlie. So you're going to have both. I don't believe that this meets the mark of a prior inconsistent statement. That's in B, Your Honor. Or a prior consistent statement. Because I, nor Attorney Sharp, nor anyone to my ear, ear and hearing, has raised any allegation of recent fabrication, improper motive, or improper influence with Mr. Murphy, which is a prior, the only way to a prior consistent statement. Mr. Murphy is almost entirely consistent with his testimony. If this honorable court says pieces are inconsistent, which I'm not agreeing, but if this honorable court finds that way, then um, the state didn't lay the proper foundation. He kept saying, 
I don't remember. Now, I don't remember is a way of saying, you know, I didn't, uh, I deny it. I mean, case law says I don't remember is equivalent to that's not accurate or that's not true or I didn't say it. But what he is saying is I don't remember because it's, this is not a statement that was within a year. This is eight years ago. This was in 2015 slash 16 uh, statement. And the state never pointed him to it, showed it to him and said, isn't this your voice? Isn't this what you said? And then on direct, excuse me, on cross with attorney Sharp, I didn't do it. Attorney Sharp went through almost every bit of that interview and he agreed with every bit of it. So I don't believe that it's a prior inconsistent or consistent statement. So I don't understand unless the state has a specific you know, piece. I don't understand how we're listening to it again. Your Honor, if I may, we did not listen to it the first time, and Mr. Sharp entered it as evidence under no objection from the state. So it is already that those words are already in evidence. Number one, there was no objection when they tendered it. There was no objection. Mr. Steele could have objected. He could have said, no, it's not a prior inconsistent statement. It's not a prior consistent statement. He did not. And in fact, what, are, what words are on that CD are, in fact, inconsistent with what um, the witness testified regarding on direct. And the reason, what, and first of all, I'm certain that Mr. Steele is not asserting that we have to refresh his memory before we confront, and that's the way that we have to confront him. We painstakingly confronted him with statements that he made in three interviews, and he made inconsistent statements on direct. He chose to not speak with the state. He said, we can speak with him when he gets on the stand. He chose to speak with Mr. Steelwell's lawyer. And so- All right, okay. All right Mr. Steele, I, I, I've considered your uh, your objections. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna overrule them at this point in time. I understand. Can I just have a clear- You may have a continuing objection, yes sir. As you recall, Your Honor, I admitted the proffer um, subject to your rulings and for the purposes of the record, as we've been doing with all sorts of things. That doesn't okay, mean what, what it, it gets wanna, published to the jury. What do you want to tell us? What do you want to tell me? Well, it doesn't mean I didn't publish any of it to the jury. And so I was admitting. No, it's it. been admitted subject to some some objections and, and subject uh, to objections. And some rulings that, that I have made, well, such as I've. I've chopped out the first 12 minutes and the other things that you that are objectionable. And, and subject to the rules of evidence. And, and, and Your Honor, I'm not trying to relitigate. Re if, if you're finding the prior inconsistent statement sets your ruling, I'm not trying to argue that. But just because I admit something to the for the record doesn't mean it automatically gets published. I, I understand that. But okay. All right. That, that's, I, I, that's, that's a that's, totally separate issue. I mean, okay. it's based upon what Mr. Murphy's testified to on direct. Okay. I just wanted the record clear okay. on that matter. Thank All you. Right. Let's bring Mr. Murphy, please. All right, sorry, name summon our jurors, please.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, State, um, do you have any redirect at this point in time? Yes, sir. All right, go right ahead. Thank you. Now, Mr. Murphy, during cross, oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> during cross examination, um, do you recall when Mr. Matthews, this gentleman right here, asked you a few questions? Yes. Okay. And do you remember him asking you whether or not we as a state showed you any videos or played your statement prior to you taking the stand? Do you remember that? Yes. All right. How many times have you and I met? Before coming to court? Twice. When were when were when were those two times? Uh at court and uh when y'all came to my house. And do you remember when we came to your house? No, I don't remember the date, but it was, it was probably a couple months ago. Was it this year in 2024? I ain't sure. Okay. Did I come by myself? No. Um, do you remember me being with an investigator? Yes. All right. How would you describe our interaction when I came to your home? You mean like one word or like describe like what happened? Describe first in one word and then what happened. It was a meeting, a meeting, like a peaceful meeting. It was peaceful? Yeah. Were you cordial to me and I was cordial to you? Yeah, we were respectful. Okay. Um, and what did we talk about at that meeting? Um, me being subpoenaed, uh, a couple of su top subject, topic. Or... Okay. Did we talk about your kids? Yes. Did I ask you if you was going to marry your girlfriend? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did we talk about um, other things outside of criminal activity? Yes. And during that meeting, did I ask if you and I could meet again? Yes. Right. And initially, did we set up a time for me to come back the following week to meet with each other? Yes. <clears throat> and did you initially agree to meet with us? Yes. All right. At the conclusion of that meeting, did I begin asking you about Shay? What it could include me, like the end. Like, like toward the end. end. Yeah. And how did you feel when I asked you about Shay? I felt disrespected. Okay. And why? Because I felt like that was my friend. Like you in my dining room while you dinner with my kids that asked me that I robbed my friend. Okay. And after that, though, did you still agree to meet with me? Yes. All right. Did my investigator make contact with you? And let me back up. You said you felt disrespected. Was I disrespectful when I asked you or just the fact that I asked you? You yeah, felt... I'm going to overrule the objection. Do you, did you think that I disrespected you or the fact that I asked you about her was disrespectful? Yes. The last one. Okay. Once we left, did my investigator try to make contact with you so that we could meet again? Yes. Did we meet again? No. Why not? I told him I didn't want to. So I talked to my lawyer after that, and he told me if I didn't want to meet with nobody, I don't have to, as long as I, I agreed to come and testify, and that's what I had to do. Okay. And so did you decide not to meet with us again? Yes. And did we ever contact you and ask for us to meet again? Hmm? Did we ever call you and, and ask you any more to meet with us? You mean like after I said I didn't want to meet? No. no. All right. And when was the next time you heard from anybody in my office? Um... I think a couple of days before I had to come here or something. A day before, two days before, something like that. Two days before you had to come and testify? Yeah, it's in that range. <clears throat> so is it safe to say that I couldn't show you any videos because we never met? Objection, Your Honor, lady. I stand your question, Mrs. Young. Was I able to show you any videos? Would you ask? Speculation. I stand this to form. Did I show you any videos the first time we met? No. And was it initially we were going to meet again? Initially before you said no? Yes. All right. <clears throat> now, I want to show you what's already been admitted at State's Exhibit 23, Alpha Alpha.
Who's that is 23 Alpha Alpha? I don't know who who in the phone or who in the picture. Who's Hold in the on. picture in the phone? Me and Lil Jeff. Okay. And do you remember when you took that picture? No. Okay. Is that what you looked like in 2013? I don't know what I look like that a lot of years. I look like that now, though. No. You said you don't look like that now? I look like that now. So no. like that. My hair just longer. Okay. Did you know if that was a picture that Mich that Shay gave to police in May of 2013? I had, I how would I know that? I, I didn't even know nothing about that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> now, on cross-examination, Mr. Shar asked whether or not the two of you spoke I think last week, and you said we nodded at each other. You remember telling Mr. Shar that? No, I said I nodded. You nodded. I nodded at everybody. Had you met Mr. Shar or anyone else prior to coming to court last week? When you say prior, you mean like? Before you ever had to come into this courthouse, had you met Mr. Shar or any of the other defense attorneys prior to you having to come to court last week? Yes. Who did you? Who have you met with? Mr. Steele. Is that it? I seen Mr. Shaw at his office, but we didn't, like, how you say, converse. We didn't converse. Okay. So Mr. Shaw was at Mr. Steele's office, but you and Mr. Shaw did not speak with each other. Mm -mm, he walked past. How many times have you met with Mr. Steele prior to coming to court? Um, I want to say, like, three times. One time... He came to speak to me while I was arrested. I mean, while I was locked up on this case. And then I went to his office one time and then Zoom one time. When you met with him at the jail, about how long did y'all speak with each other? I can't remember. I, it was, that was a minute ago. What, what about when you went to his office? Do you remember how long y'all met with each other? Probably about, about 30 to 45 minutes. I had to go to work, so I was kind of rushing. And then what about the Zoom meeting? Mm, probably about the same, about 45 minutes. When you met with Mr. Steele, was that before I came to your house? <laughs> probably right before that. I can't really remember, but it, they aligned, so it was... Now, since you've been on the stand, you've allowed Mr. Kokomo, you he, Mr. Kokomo lets you listen to the audio of your father. Remember that? Mr. Yes, we was outside, yes. Now, since this break, did you meet with Ms. Knight and did she show you the video of that same proper Mr. Kokomo show? Yes, I, that was the same. That was the same thing, though. I can't. That was days ago he told me that. I'm at home with my kids. I can't remember. Let me ask you this. With what Miss Knight showed you, do you remember that being the property you took in February 2016? Yes. And did that appear to be a fair and accurate depiction of the proper that you took in February 2016? Yes. And have you had an opportunity to review it and sign and date that proper that you took in February 2016? Yes, we scanned through it and I signed it. Okay. And did it appear to have Everything that you talked about, that you don't recall at this point. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Pochon. You may. I'm sure what was already given to defense counsel, but uh, what's going to be marked with 33 Charlie Charlie. Do you recognize that CD? I just signed it. No problem. And did you date it? Yes. And that was at the video that Ms. Knight showed Yes. You're right. This time, say like the tennis season, the 33 Charlie Charlie with what we discussed in tab. Any further objection or continue objection? All right, so noted. It's admitted, subject to the court's uh, prior ruling and the continued objection. Okay. And Mr. Murphy published. May be published. Now, Mr. Murphy, during that agreement, did the attorney speak with you about um, what a proper agreement was? 
I can't remember. I, I just remember we had that little meeting. Let me ask you, did the attorney tell you that he was going to record that interview? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't have to like look at it to see. I don't remember. Let me ask you this. Did he go over the proper agreement? Like why you were there? Did he tell you why you were there? Objection. Hearsay. A standing objection. You rephrase. Why? Why were you present inside the room? Sure. I'm sorry. Why were you present at the in the room? We was having a uh, like I call it a meeting. Y'all call it something. What do you call? A proffer. Yeah, that. Okay. And was the expectation of that proffer for you to be completely honest and truthful? So, I'll sustain that as the form of the question. Why don't you just rephrase? Yeah, I got him on redirect. Okay. So. Were you in handcuffs during? Were you in handcuffs during? I can't remember. I can't see all that. I just we just looked at it for a second. I reckon she made sure I recognized that was me and my attorney, and so I signed it. Yes, ma'am. Is that where he lives um, or lived? My house where everybody hung out at. Okay. Uh -huh. we, were, um, we were just chilling. Okay. Who all was there with you? Uh, me, Fatty, and uh, no, no, I was in the back. Anybody else? Uh, can't remember. I think it was like a working the door or something. When you say working the door, what do you mean? I said, you said work in the door. Yeah, that's from the door. Oh, is it like a, a, a dope house? Did they sell dope out the house? Like, I'm just trying to, you said work in the door. Like, why do you think somebody? Going. Okay. So you, Fatty, and Nard, and maybe a Jay that was at the house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
What happened next? Um, um, we were just chilling, huh? And I came out the back. Mm -hmm. He was like, let ride, right. yeah, we got to ride. Right. And I was like, all right. So when I got up, he walked back in the kitchen. And then when I got up, he handed me a chopper. So Nara handed you a chopper? Mm -hmm. Who all left? Me, him, and Fatty. Okay, whose vehicle were you all in? Uh, Bentley. And what type of vehicle was that? The white, um, Jeep truck, the white truck. The white truck. This part here is important. What exactly did Nard say when he came out the back and you got, I got, I'm assuming you and Fatty were in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. When he came out that back room, what exactly, as best as you can remember, were his words? I think the best I can remember was, um, and he said, let ride, eh? let ride. What did you take that to mean? Like something going down, we got to ride. Okay. Something bad going down? Yeah, like something going down. Okay. When he, why did you take the assault rifle from him? Why did I take the assault rifle from him? I, to be honest, like, I thought it was fit to go down. Like, right there, I thought somebody would come to the spot. Because okay. we had so much going on, like, beef and shit. Mm -hmm. I thought some nigga about to pull up on the spot. Okay. But then we jumped in the truck. I knew we were going to either do something or something had went down. We had to pull up on the scene. Okay. Did he say why you guys had to ride or who called him? Uh-uh. Not at that moment. Not at that moment. When, when did you find out? When I got to the scene. When you got to the scene? Okay, and what was the scene? The store. The, the gas station? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you got to the gas station, continue from that point. Um, when we pulled up to the gas station, I think, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, no, I got out first, or me and him got out at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we walked to the front of the store. We walked to the front of the store, we opened the door. Mm -hmm. And I, well, when we pulled up, I seen, um, I seen the car Bentley was driving earlier, which was, um, Hot Rock car. The, like that's a, um, the car that they black, were? Like, something. The car that before, Bentley then was in? Sedan, yeah. Okay. Car sedan, car mm -hmm. black. They were, Bentley was driving earlier, so I seen it and I knew it was like, you know what I'm saying? So, when we opened the door, I seen it and I'm like, come out, you know what I'm saying? I'm holding the door open. In the middle of the door. And they were acting scared. Like when you say dad. they, who who are you talking about? Who did you see at the store? I seen Bentley I, I seen Hot Rod like like standing in the back, like talking to my own phone or something. Now who else did you see? Um I said Bentley Hot Rod in that point. Okay. And then they told Nod something. And then I came out and pointed, he, he pointed at the car. Pointed at which car? And, um, car. Okay. He pointed at the car to hit him. And then that's when I, I ran up to it. But I think either, either, either he pointed at the car or they were like, it's this such and such car. Like, it's them in this car, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I ran up to the car with the people with the, with the gun. What was your purpose in doing that? Like to, I can't really remember. I was so high. To mm -hmm. I was so, so drugged out and so gone out my mind. I wasn't even who I really was. But you, but you remember running up to the victim's car? Yeah, I remember running up to the car. Do you remember? I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I remember running up to the car and then like, I could see movement in the car, and then the wonder came down. Mm -hmm. So I backed up. Did you at any time point that chopper at the their vehicle? Already it was already pointed at their car? Okay, when you say Bentley, what other name do you know him as? Or do you know his real name? Yeah. You don't know his real name? What about Hot Rod? Hot Rod. Hot Rod. But you don't know a real name for them? What about Fat? Uh, I know your dad names. Weird, you know, but I like that. Oh, Weird, like, like, like what? Kirk, Kirk, Kirk and Dow, Kirk and Dow. Okay. What about Nard? Do you know his real name? I think his real name is Kennard. 
Bernard. 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 Okay. So what was the conversation from after you pointed the assault rifle at the victim's car? Mm -hmm. What did you do after that? At that point, I, I seen the movement in the car and the window came down and I bet off the car. And then what? And then I think I walked back to the store, the door of the store, or the front entrance of the store, mm -hmm. the, where everybody was standing. And then the car spread out. Mm -hmm. They pulled off and then we were like, they were out, everybody, they were out. We jumped, they, they jumped in the car, and we jumped in the car. Okay, what was the conversation in the car? Really no conversation, it was just, no conversation, everybody was high. And then, then before, before, let me ask you just another quick, just say that uh, you can't remember some of these things because you were so high. What were you high on? Is your marijuana or what? what? Molly. Molly. Yeah. And uh, how? Molly, Percocet. Do you remember about how much you took? Probably three grams, four grams. The what? Molly. Plus the Percocet. <laughs> Plus Percocet. How many pills of Percocet? Probably two or three. And is that something that uh, your body's used to? Is that like the normal dose that you usually take to, to feel good or? That's over. For my body, especially the Molly. And uh, how often do you use Molly? Uh, probably like four times a week. Okay. Four days a week. Four like days. Four times, four days. And about how, how much do you take when you usually take Molly? Probably like a gram. Okay. A gram and a half on a on on good night. All right. So, go on. Okay. So when you guys pulled out the service station, what happened at that point? Um, we pulled out the service station, and I think they would pull out in front of them. But when when the car pulled out, they spread off. The, the victim, victim's car? Yeah, they went down Jungle Road. Mm -hmm. And then we went down Brownsville. Okay. But I think they was behind us first, um, Bentley. Okay. I think they were behind us first. And then once we came, yeah, once we came to the street, um, where Dobbs Elementary, mm -hmm. the uh, Harper Road. And then we see, now I seen the car again. And he like, these niggas think, I think they always said, like, these niggas think I'm playing. And we pulled up, like, like in between, in the middle of the street. Like, who, now who we said that? No, the driver. Right. So what were you seeing? Tell it. Tell it when you I got back seat. in the car, I was in the passenger seat. The front or back? The front passenger seat. Okay. And where was Nard? No, I was in the driver's seat. And where was, who was the third person you said? Fatty was in the back. Fatty was in the back behind seat? Behind Nard. Behind you or? Nard. Behind Nard? Okay. So when Nard said, these niggas think I'm playing with them? Yeah, I think. Fatty was like, there they going. Nard like, oh, these niggas think I'm playing. And he pulled in the like, cause we on the right side of the street. Mm -hmm. Pulled in the middle of the street, so now we like the, the yellow line, like in between the car and our in between our car. Here's your hands. Like yeah, like the yellow line in between. This the yellow line. We in, we in between on both sides of the line. And the car is on which side of y'all? Um, the drive side, which is um, the drive side, which is the left side. Okay. You know what I'm and they have the stop sign. Mm -hmm. And so Bentley them go around us. Keep straight. Keep straight down Brownsville. Nard let the window down. You said Nard let the window down? And then what? And shot. Show your hands. Use your hands. Nard let the window down. One thing, pull the stick out to out the flow boat. Mm -hmm. Put it on the sail of the wound. Shot. Okay. Did he hit the driver's side or the passenger side? At the passenger side. He hit the passenger side of the victim's vehicle. Did you shoot at all? Did Fatty have a firearm? Yes, a handgun. He had a handgun? Do you remember what caliber? Do you know if he shot? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Then then what happened after after Nard shoots? He shot, I think like the mess is fired by I think four times. Okay. And pulled off. Where did you guys go after that? Went back to the spot. 
and continue on. When you say they were there, who are you speaking about? Mm -hmm. And Hopper was leaving though. I think he was getting his stuff. Like he, everybody was clearing out the spot. Mm -hmm. Cause we already, we knew. You know what I'm saying? No, I just shot them for. Mm -hmm. So everybody's phone calling. My ride trying to get somewhere to go. You know what I'm saying? So I think Fatty had a hot box. So we got, Fatty got in the hot box for either. When you say hot box, you got, you got to speak. Lane the stolen car. The stolen car. You remember what kind of car it was? Um, when you guys came back to the house, where'd you park? Across the street from the house. Across the street from the house? In the empty in the house, bro. Okay. What happened with the uh with the firearms? I don't know. I got them and put them up. Put them up where? In the house. In the back. He took Fatty's weapon as well? That was Fatty's gun? Yeah. So... Who did you call to come pick you up? I think I called my girl. But I think I got in the car. Yeah, I got in the car with Fatty first. Okay. What's your cell phone number then? I had a phone. Well, how did you call your girl to come pick you up? I used somebody else's phone. Whose phone did you use? Uh, I can't recall whose phone I used. Well, who all was at the house when you got back? When I got back? Person who was left in the house, which was the the, uh, the J who was passing the door, and not me, Bentley. Okay, what's your girl's cell phone number? No, I don't want to jump past. Um, give me the phone number for my bitch. I'm going to call that 2455. We're going to call that 2455 because it's phone number. Okay. Oh, we got twenty five on two. Ed, back in uh, April twenty fifteen. About how long do you think you guys were? From the time you first left the house and then everything happened with the shooting to the time you guys got back to the house, how much time you think lapsed between that? Say that again. From the time you guys first left the house uh -huh. and then everything happened at the store and then the shooting happened to when you guys got back to the house, about how long you think it, it was total time? When you left the house to when you got back to the house? I don't know. I'm loving it. 10 or 15 minutes. 10 or 15? Yeah, from 15 to 10 minutes. Okay. So, your girl comes and what? You, I'm sorry, you said you left in the car with who? Fatty. With Fatty. Who was driving that car? Fatty. Where did you go to? Um, he dropped me off up the street. Up, up the street where? At my partner Boo House. Boo. Boo. Boo House. Was there any conversation after the fact who exactly called NAR to, I guess, say, let's ride? Who made that call? Bentley. How sure are you it was Bentley? Uh, I'm scared from one to ten, like a six or a seven. Why did you say that Bentley called? Like, did, did someone tell you that, or, or are you just assuming? No, I ain't assuming. I'm I know that's what Ben do, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm How I ain't going to call nobody, he's going to be like, hey, call such and such. Mm hmm 
<clears throat> so Bentley made the call to NAR, and NAR basically told you guys, let's ride. Okay. I never told y'all why. Hold on. I'm sorry. Pause that for a second. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, wait. You want to step out? No, no. It, it can't. I just want to. It is uh, 11. 2 a.m. We're back uh, recording. Uh, Mr. Hudson had a chance to uh, talk briefly with his client, uh, and uh, we're going to continue with the proffer. Okay. Um, we still been kind of working the case uh, after since the last time we spoke, and um, we reviewed the video again and again and showed a couple people the video and, you know, steel shots and all of that. And Fatty's name. Oh, I'm sorry. Fatty's name has been only used by you as being involved. And that's really our our major objective is to get everybody, you know, involved. Involved. Uh -huh. So I really need to know if Fatty was that third person in the car with you guys. Because in my own opinion, and I've seen the video, it doesn't resemble Fatty. Uh -huh. So I really need to know if that was fatty. Um, I mean, so, so many of us, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I don't want to lie, but I remember fatty being there though. You remember Fatty being in the car, or you remember Fatty being at the house? I remember Fatty being in the truck with us. In the truck with you all. Okay. How long do you think you've known Fatty? Or known of him? I met Fatty like earlier. Like one of the, let me see. I met Fatty like the summer before this happened. The summer before this happened? So you see him pretty often in the neighborhood? Yeah. Couple times a month. Tell me if that's fatty. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right on there. Who you recognize that as? And sign and I'm sorry. Sign and date your name. Today's date is 2-16-2016. Do you remember what color firearm that he had? Discussion after the shooting on if anybody was hit, you know, if somebody was hit, or did y'all know that somebody was sh shot? No, I didn't know at all. Was it any discussion the next day, week after? Did y'all realize somebody was hit? Actually, to, to be honest, like, after I came down with that high and I realized what I had been through all that day, mm -hmm. I ain't seen them for, for like another. Or was that by choice or was it like by low choice. or what was it? Like by choice, like I got too high that night. I'm trying to get around, you know what I'm saying? Now, um, let me just clarify one thing. When 
you pulled up on the car and you're saying that Nard pulled the window open and he got the stick at the window and then he shot maybe a maximum of four times. The victim's car, uh, was it facing you? Were, were you all facing each other or was the victim's car going in the same direction as your car? I'm not sure. The victim's car. Okay. You can draw it out okay. if you want. Okay, I'm gonna write the streets. So this here is Brown's Mill. And let's say Harper Road runs this way, right? Draw on there the positions of you guys' this car. your car where they couldn't pass or yeah, like he blocked them off he blocked them off so the the drivers are facing each other right like you can and you I'm your car can see the front of the car i, I think i understand what you're saying so they driver is where he at if i'm not and that's me they drive is where he at and i got you pass it. oh so it was like uh, at the intersection exactly right. it, was, it was at the intersection so large driver's side door would be facing which, if this is you guys' car, right? Yeah, if, if this is the car, driver's no, side door, all I gotta do is look right here, and that's them. That's, that's them. I got you. you do uh, you understand? So what I'm saying. Thank you, your phone real quick. <clears throat> to let them go and go about their business? I think it was, yeah, it was more like, let me get out their way and let me make sure they can follow them. Like, gotcha. I gotcha. you. Do you recognize this person in the white shirt? It's the same person here. I don't recognize him. What was being said in that frame? Like, why y'all right there like that? Like, what was the conversation? Right there in that conversation. I'm like, I don't know who, who. So I'm like, all I know is Bentley. No, like, hot rod. So these niggas, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to up on them. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm so high and so scared. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm more scared of me hurting somebody and getting hurt than anything. And I'm, and I'm high at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then to the point where I got like that, I think, I think when we came out the store, how to like put it up. He was saying, put what up? The gun. Put the gun up. Put it up. Like, hide. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not put it up. I just cover mm -hmm. it up. Why didn't you shoot the car when you first was about to? Because I thought they were shoot me. So you backed off? Okay. When? Oh, I'm answer sorry. that question. Did you back off? Yes or no? Yes, I backed off the car. Okay. I did run up on the car mm -hmm. with, with, with my gun. But when I saw the movement and the vehicle, when the wounded came down on the vehicle, I bad off. I was scared. Okay. So we fast forward a little bit for when the cars are bumping each other and you say that Nart pulls on the window and shoots. 
uh, was he shooting with his own rifle or was he using your rifle? No, he was his rifle. And what was your rifle at that time? His, my rifle was in the floor of my seat right here. It and, wasn't in the floor of like laying down, but it was standing up in between my legs. And now, uh, as you know, the uh, shell cases are collected and they're, they will be examined and all that. From what you're telling us, from what you remember, only one gun was fired that day. Yeah. So if shell casings come back, they should all come back to that one rifle. To that one fire pin, yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's the guy in the back, which you believe was fatty, with a handgun. There should be no handgun shell casings anywhere, and there should only be one, two, two, threes, or whatever caliber y'all were using. Yeah, if, yeah, if fatty didn't shoot, but I'm not sure if he shot because. We that thing was crammed up in this truck. It's a photo and it's a like a mini truck. But it, 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 it I saw like a loud. But if he shot, it would be a completely different caliber because only you have an assault rifle and Nard has an assault rifle. Yeah. The person in the back, back has a has handgun. handgun. Okay. Oh, also, did you own an assault rifle? Where did you get that assault rifle from? I got it from the spot. I got it from when I bring it out the which is always in the spot. Why so? For some, you go down. Like in the case we might do. Okay. Uh, more if like somebody try to rob us or we beef with, you know, if and all that. So they try to roll up on spots. Were you at the house when they initially, when uh, Hot Rod and um Bentley left? Uh, I pulled up. I think I was looking for them. You you were pulled up in what? Uh, I think I pulled up with Fatty. I can't really remember. But I know I pulled up, like, trying to, yeah, like, trying to come kick. So you and Fatty were together before y'all came to the house? Yeah. Okay. It's okay, I got you. Yeah. And um, and I'll briefly just want to ask about uh, the gang affiliation again. Uh, can you again tell me what gang you're affiliated with, member of, and also if there is any type of rank? Blood. Okay. What's the set? Um, I says my but I'm as of now I'm not blood, but I'm talking about thin. Yeah. You sex money murder. Would that be consistent with YSL? Is that the same game? Uh, YSL, you could be crip, you could be whatever. Okay, explain that to me. Pee Wee Roscoe or crip, you YSL. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about specific about people. people. I'm right. blood. So well, you're. I was the blood, but now we YSL, and don't nobody like us, no matter where we go. Now. What you mean now? Like, since everything been happening on the street, what been happening? So what do you mean by that is that at the time, Bloods were YSL, but since all this beef has been happening with IF, YSL is its own off. thing. They cut us off and, okay. let us, and made everybody like, try to attack us when they see us. So were you also YSL at the time? Yeah. Okay. But now YSL is not a blood. YSL is its own thing. YSL was all, it was it always its own thing then. That's why they mad. Okay. Because they like, they saying, how you going to be YSL and it's bloods and crips and niggas who ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. Niggas who, you know what I'm saying? Niggas everywhere. Not some YSL. All around the world. You know what I'm saying? Um... How long had you been a blood from uh, that date, from uh, April? Two years, a year. Two Nine, years? I said, say two years. Two years? It's 2016. How long had YSL been in existence? Since about 2013, YSL. So before you were YSL, you were a blood? Like sex, money, murder. Yeah. Before when I became, I was YSL. Before I was the blood. Okay. So then, when, once you got a part of YSL. Yeah. Then 
We became sex money murder. You became sex money murder. All the people that were with you that day, were all of them wise? Um, everybody that you have talked about today? No, not everybody. Who was YSL from that day? Um, Bentley, Nard, and Fatty. Okay. Bentley, Nard, and Fatty. Not Hot Rod? No. Does he have any gang affiliation? What is uh, Bentley to you? How do you how do you know him? I just met him on the street. Do you know what he does? Like, what's his job? Uh, he used to work for for um, though he was his um, I think his manager for a minute, and then he started stealing. If I got fired, and then after that he just went back to I guess whatever he was doing, selling dope. Did he grow up with y'all? Did he do Where did he grow up at? I think. Uh, I think he grew up on Jungle Road. When this happened, was he still working for Thug, or had he already been fired then? Um, I think he had already been fired. Then. Is does he have some type of rank, or was he YSL or anything, gang affiliated, or he just was associated by the business? Uh, I think YSL too. I think I'm all done with my line of questioning. Did you have any more? Did you have anything to do this? In your role, well, you have talked to us about going to the spot to get high and also that there have been some some people trying to get to you guys. You mentioned IF gang. That's probably why you needed to uh, to tool up that day. Uh, so how do you fit into this structure? How do, do you get paid by them? Do you just get free drugs? Do you, do you get a cut of whatever? money they get, how how do you get paid as a member of YSL? You don't get paid, you just get how you live, huh? Do you need to... You gotta get it on your own. Do you need to pay some taxes, whatever you get? Do you need to share it with the crew? No, the home niggas were in prison. So, how did you make your money at that time? I rob, stealing, whatever I had to do. So when you steal something, say you steal a thousand dollars, all of that yours, or do you need to give some back to YSL? Yes, I'm back. How much do you need to give back? At least one hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so every time you have a lick, you have to pay one hundred and fifty. Who do you pay it to? Uh, just look out. You know, just look out for the homie called the Red Boss. You just mm -hmm. look out for the, whoever ain't got nothing. All right, so somebody. Somebody that might be in custody yeah. needs some money in their books. You, yeah. that's. But who do you tell? How do they know that you are doing your part? How do they keep track of, of you actually paying your dues? Cause um, if I did, you know, they like something to brag about, and they gon' they gon' nigga gon' check and see if you did it. I sent, oh, I sent such and such some money. You know what I'm how do you brag on Instagram or how how do you brag about it? However. <laughs> Just put the receipt on Instagram, show a nigga with the receipt. I'm saying, I got the green dot receipt for. Okay. So basically, since you, you've been in custody for seven months, basically that same favor has been returned to you from otherwise ill members, basically, correct? Uh, you gotta go, you gotta be down the road to get a green dot. So not in Fulton County? No. All right. Um, I do, uh, I think you might have looked at some pictures, but today I, I would like to go over some of the pictures again, if you can uh, tell us who is who uh, with Bentley and Hot Rod and all of them. Oh, you need a set of those. Uh, I, yeah, I think I can have some more going. I have a question. Do you mind us asking about the robberies and the other incidents? We're stopping right here. They don't have a 40. At 4602, and then replay at 
Uh, you, whichever ones you okay. want to use. I think I may have uh, just regular pictures. So now with, with that said, with a very uh, clear disclaimer from your attorney, uh, has there been any threats made to you? About these right here? Yeah. Even by who? Even me. We've done about a, about a boatload. What type of threats have been made? I mean, if I'm not that in custody, you know, you know your girl with your mama's life. So who do you know who's saying that? He, he's just saying to other niggas, like I call home and live with that. You know what I think you don't tell, bro. He's my, you know where your baby is. You tell, you know where your baby mama's life. You know where your mama's life. And, um, does, does your girl, does she have the contact information for the investigators? All right, well, if, if you want, after after this, if you want to give us her contact info, they'll reach out to her so she has a person to call if something does happen, okay? Uh, any other threats being made against you? I have blood. I get threats all the time. I just pray to God. Have you been in fights at the jail? I've been in two days. With who? So, have all YSL members been targeted since you guys been in custody? It's just like a given, or? It's not, it's not just me. It's no matter what YSL, they answer and they got us out because it's not a lot of us. So now tell me why, why, why does IF have problems with you? Why does IF have problems with you? It's all started with some rap, which home man, you know, uh, that's how that started. When, when they stopped hanging together and had their differences or stopped speaking, and you know, everybody else just followed suit. So. But I, I really want you to help me understand because I mean, rap battles are a media thing. You know, they, they do rap battles. They they have beef. They their records. Uh, their sales go up. How does this transform into people shooting at you and? And shooting at your loved ones, and then you guys having to pull up to shoot back. What? How did it get to this point? Um, got to this point. Doug and Rich Home fell out, which I don't know about. But they fell out and had words, and it was all on the internet and everything. And Rich Home Gift Gang, Rich Home Gift Gang, he and he paid. Um, he got up on the. Big nut with you. You know what I'm saying? And then he got up on the young kid. And then it went from there. No, I mean, no, no. So, um, you know, it was in the shot, it was dogs, dogs in the real blood, all that. So, all right, we think y'all know the story. Y'all catch our own investigation. He done told you enough to get you started. He's not going into no more detail. So you say something? Yes. Yes. Yes, you may.
All right, Jerry's left it. Uh, we just Thank you,
Um, councils, um, just as an administrative matter, the state's going to bring in Ms. Roberson for me to give her an instruction about just returning tomorrow since we probably will not be through with Mr. Murphy. Um, I'm just going to ask her to come back tomorrow around 1030. She's a crime scene technician, so it shouldn't be, we shouldn't have too much with her tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow is a short day since you have um, Jira two nineteen who has an appointment. So we're gonna we're gonna start for ten hundred hours promptly, and then we'll uh, we'll conclude somewhere around twelve fifteen or thereabouts. Okay, but I'm gonna have her come in right now, Miss Roberson, please, Cap. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Ms. Robeson. How are you, madam? I'm, I'm Judge Glanville. Just want to introduce myself. Look, I understand that you were supposed to be called today. We were not in a position to get to you quite yet. I just want to tell you it's nobody's fault, but just the process. But can I ask your uh, assistance in coming back tomorrow for, if you could be here for 10, we'll start somewhere between 10, 1030, or hopefully. Is that all right? And not, we apologize, but we just, that we just, you know, just we're running out of road today. And I don't want you to stay here um, much longer because I doubt we'll get to you by the end of the business day. Okay. All right. So we'll see you tomorrow morning for 10 hundred. 10. Yes, ma'am. All right. We'll see you then. Okay. So I'll release you this one time. We'll, we'll see you in the morning. Mm -hmm. You can tell her in the morning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Good, good catch. All right. Can we bring back Mr. Murphy, please? Um. What redaction are you talking about, Mr. Steele? It was 2950 that's pitched. I believe if I'm wrong, please correct me. I think that's true. That's correct, Your Honor. We request that skip, uh, skip over that time in the statement of reasons. Yes, we're just going to start at 50 minutes and then also agree to conclude it at 55 minutes. Okay. All right. Your Honor, because we could not get in, because we've redacted the first 12 minutes of the audio recording with Mr. Um, Suri try to going over the proffer agreement, what we've done to try to expedite that portion of it is we actually have a copy of the proffer agreement that Mr. Murphy signed back in 2016. We have provided the defense a redacted version that redacts Mr. Um, Chada having his name from the front page of the document, as well as the back portion where um, Mr. Jimenez signs the document. And so we're not, I'm, I don't intend to admit the plea agreement. Excuse me, but it's not redacted. In the plea agreement, one Charlie Charlie or whatever? No, Your Honor. The That's the proffer from this case, Your Honor. All right. So the state at this juncture, because I don't believe we have a redacted version of the guilty. Oh, I'm sorry. You do. Okay. You do. So we do have both. So we'll, we'll tender both the redacted version of um, the proffer agreement as well as the... Um, Redacted version of the guilty plea and plea agreement, Your Honor. All right. In in this case, which was fifteen SC one three eight two three four. All right, and Mr. Mr. Steele. Okay, Your Honor. With the state's assistance, I have objections to both documents. Um, the document dated February 16, two thousand sixteen, written to the Honorable Jacoby Hudson. Do you know the number by any chance? Oh, 404. This phone number? No, I'm not. I mean, an exhibit number. Uh, it's going to be 33 Charlie Alpha and 33 Charlie Bravo. Your Honor, 33 Charlie Colette Alpha is a 2016, February 2016 letter, and it is written, um, it's redacted, but it's written by Mr. Jimenez, but it is redacted. His name is not on here. Um, and it's to 
Jacoby Hudson, who's not a witness, and um, it talks about that the, in prong one, the Office of Fulton County District Attorney, the state, quote unquote, requires completely truthful statements of your client. At the bottom, on no, paragraph six, the proffer is to be provided for the purpose of allowing the state to assess the credibility and value of this evidence and possible testimony we believe your client can provide. And number seven, no promises, agreements, or conditions have been entered into other than those set forth in this agreement. None will be entered into. Um, all of this is hearsay and confrontation clause. That's This is built for a confrontation clause, and we can't cross-examine either Mr. Hudson, who received it, or Mr. Or excuse me, attorney, pro, then prosecutor Jimenez. So I'm objecting to it, and I don't see the relevance of it. It's, it's to bolster the district attorney wants truthful information before a jury. That's bolstering. Don't That's self-serving. Let me ask you a question. Does the plea agreement have these same terms in it? It does not, Your Honor. And the reason why it's not bolstering is because Mr. Murphy has consistently said, both in direct and in cross, that the reason why he would cut off his right arm and just say anything in order to um, get out of custody. But this agreement, he went over. It's not hearsay because he went over. This was gone over with him. This is the part that was cut out. Every portion of this was gone over with him. And then he himself read it and signed it and agreed to these conditions prior to giving the proffer. And so when he comes in court today and says, I was, would have said anything, well, that's not the guise in which he was following at the time in which he gave the proffer. proffer. If he signed the document, Mr. Steele, um, the fact that Mr. Hudson, you're not going to, you're going to examine him anyways, is all being offered for impeachment. So, well, uh, okay. I'm just voicing my objection that it should not come in respectfully. It's self-serving to a party opponent. That's the, that's the district attorney's office specifically says they want complete and truthful statements. That should not come into the evidence. And number two, it has no relevance to this matter. The gentleman can be asked, did you lie? Did you tell the truth? And what was, uh, the ground rules were this. You don't need a document. And I'd be objecting. I know you always tell us you'll decide that later about the continuing witness rule, but clearly it would be. Anyway, hearsay, confrontation clause. On 33C as in Colette, B as in Barry, Charlie, Bravo. Your Honor, um, this is before the Honorable Judge uh, Esmond Adams. And it is th this is the plea agreement. And in paragraph 3G, as well as I, it discusses appellate rights. And um, I've already objected to anything about appeals in this case, and it should not come out. In addition to that, in paragraph eight, it says the same thing as what I've objected to in 33C, Colette A, Elisa, or Charlie Alpha. Mr. Steele, I really would like you to use the military alphabet I, only. I, you got to I'm going to love these people. I, yes, no, we're going to, no. Your bride is a very nice lady, but, but. I would like you to use the military alphabet, okay? Don't I don't need duplication. Just makes it simpler for my for, for, for us to kind of go through. All right. So please, in paragraph eight, though, okay, it says on the first two lines and following the defendant who would be Mr. Uh, Murphy agrees to cooperate truthfully and completely with the state, including being debriefed and providing truthful testimony at any proceedings. So why do we need twice? Why do we need a letter from an unwritten person because the prosec then prosecutor's name is erased to a lawyer who's not testifying when it ate the first two lines, if you let it in, says the exact same thing. But it doesn't have anything to do with the lawyers. It has something to do with Mr. Murphy and his testimony. And since he's being offered for impeachment, if he's confronted as to it, or testifying inconsistently to what he's already testified to. Um, <sighs> I don't see being consistent, but the I, statements, I mean, in terms of but in terms of being, I mean, were you honest? I mean, did you did you attempt to tell the truth when you when you signed this agreement? I mean, I think that it's relevant to show that. But in one of the first document written to the Honorable Attorney Hudson, it reads and I'm just quoting it's in the first line and uh, first word of number one, paragraph one, it's number one, it's paragraph truly numbered one. The Office of the Fulton County District, and then it says state, requires completely truthful statements of your client. 
Why would that go in when eight says on the other document, the one to the Honorable Judge Esmond Adams, the defendant agrees to cooperate truthfully and completely with the state? And why do we need that the state mandates truth versus the defendant agrees to cooperate? That's, that, I, I don't know if I'm articulating well, but my point is it's, it's bolstering the prosecution, the district attorney's office. That's my objection. Okay. And then number, paragraph 10, it says the same thing. In what document, sir? Uh, the second one, the one to Judge At Esmond Adams. What, what number is that, sir, for the record? Just, just so I can. 33CB. 30C, Charlie Bravo. Okay, all right. Yes. Okay. This one, the four lines up in paragraph 10, it's on page three of the document, Your Honor. It says, if, however, the state determines that the defendant has not been completely truthful and candid with his cooperation with the state, he may be subject to prosecution for perjury, false statements, obstruction of justice, and any other appropriate charge, and all information he has provided may be used against him in such prosecution. So my point is, if you let it in over my objection, I'm not waiving any objection, sure. but um, it's... It's all consumed in 33 CB, is my point, without the language that the state requires completely truthful statements. All right. I'll hear from the state. Okay. Thank you. Sir, thank you. you yes, know, yes, ma'am. Your Honor, again, the state is offering both 33 Charlie Charlie Alpha and 33 Charlie Charlie Bravo for its effect on the listener. Again, Mr. Murphy, throughout his direct and his cross, said, I would have said anything just to get out of that role. What 33 Charlie Charlie Alpha specifically, as it relates to what we just saw, is in the beginning of this proffer that we just watched, that we, these 12 minutes, the prosecutor went over the entire document. He then signed it and continued with his proffer. This is the portion that earlier today, the court said we could ask him about. We couldn't play it but we could ask him about it. So to make it easier to ask about it, we provided the document so he can have it in front of him when I asked him about it. This is what he signed on February 16th. After hearing this from the prosecutor's mouth, he then completed the proffer knowing what the conditions were. And the jury can then weigh whether or not he was doing it because he was being honest or whether or not he was doing it just to get out of jail. Okay. But that's the reason why we're bringing it in, Your Honor. Mr. Steele, I've, I've noted your objection. I'm going to I'm going to overrule it and allow it at this point in time. However, I would like you to just be mindful. Do not bring up anything about Mr. Jimenez or Mr. Hudson. OK. Well, we will ask that he sign in the front of his attorney. That's I don't fine. Have to say the name, That's but fine. That's fine. But remember, this is not about Mr. Hudson because he's not being called as a witness. It's about Mr. Mr. Murphy. OK. Yes, sir. All right. Let's bring Mr. Murphy back in, please, sir. Yes, sir. All right, summon our jurors, please, uh, Sergeant Ingram. Thank you. We got a witness on the stand at this point in time. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Oh, we're still missing somebody.
Now you're by the president. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right. Um, Okay, who do we have? Is it you? Uh, Examining Mr. Murphy this one time? Yes, you are. Okay, all right. All right, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. It's a redirect. Whenever you're ready, flip those over and here's an ink pen. Identify the, those people as you know them. Same as before. Write the, their name on there that, at, as you know them. And then, um, Put your name and name. Who is this first one here? And then can you tell me what it is that's there? Uh, this one what? here is... And you show it to the camera, so... It's... This one here. What about Nard? Nard's like a hot kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's going to talk about the wild fella. Meaning what? He's going to go first. And then that's good. You know? All the little boy, he's going to go first. So he with it, basically. Like, if it's a problem. From the still photo, who do you recognize that as? Uh, right. right here. Right on there, who you know that as? Probably somewhere on the white car. Right? Who can see it? This one, who do you recognize this picture?
All right, last photo. Same with that. If you need to draw arrows, I know it's darker on the outside. If you need to write the name and draw an arrow to that person. You can do that. Person is. You say you didn't know who that person is. No, you know who that person is. Who is that? I'm oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see the arrow. I got you. Okay. All right. So, um, it's twelve nine p.m. Uh, do you have any questions, uh, Mr. Murphy? Is there anything else you want to add? Is there anything that uh, we didn't ask about that you think is important that we need to? Besides everything that happened tonight, I do feel for the bit big parts because there's some out of life that's priceless. You can't get that back. And then I'm regretting every every second, every moment, of every life. I just I got a son. I just want to give that to my family. I'm incarcerated. Praising my high power and trying to learn something new every day so I can teach my son and your what, two daughters and my two daughters how not to go through what I had to go through. I appreciate that and I'll we'll let him know and then hopefully we can we can work something out fairly soon. Uh, anything you'd like to add? Yes, uh, I would like. Uh, hey, we're going to start drawing the All right. Now, Mr. Murphy, prior to starting um, being questioned by the investigator, did you and your attorney have to sign a document um, prior to um, speaking with the attorneys? I mean, speaking with the investigator that day. I think I just seen that sign. Okay. I think I seen that sign on the video. Permission to approach? You may. I'm going to show you what's on Marcus 33. Charlie Charlie Alpha. And I want you to flip through and see. Do you see your signature on 33 Charlie Charlie Alpha? Yes. And is this the document that the prosecutor went over prior to you actually making your actual statement? I think so. Okay. And did you sign it? Yes. And did your attorney sign it? Yes. All right. And was it dated? Yes. And what was the date of the agreement? Uh, 216 16. Okay. And I'm also going to show you 33 Charlie Charlie Bravo. Um, when you took your plea, do you recall going over this document with your attorney um, when you took the plea in this case, uh, which is indictment 15 SC 138234? I don't remember going over by seeing my signature. You saw your signature? And, and it's the same date, yeah. And do you also see your attorney's signature as well? Yes. All right. At this time, you're on a state would like to send the state's exhibit 30, 33 Charlie Charlie Alpha and 33, 33 Charlie Charlie Bravo into evidence. Any further objections that haven't otherwise been noted and uh, uh, ruled upon by the court? All right, hearing none. Um, there are <coughs> states Charlie. Charlie Alpha and Charlie Charlie Bravo are admitted. And Mr. Murphy, I'm gonna first start with 33 Charlie Charlie Alpha, okay? Okay. All right, and you're gonna probably need to grab it so you can see what I'm asking you. In the beginning of the proffer, did the prosecutor go over this document and tell you that the office of the Fulton County District requires completely truthful statements of your client. Anything related to the state by you or your client during the proffer not and will not be used against your and the state's case in chief, that no statements, 
made by your client during the proffer will be used against your client to increase any recommendation regarding the appropriate sentence he should receive in the pending case. This, this does not apply, however, to any previous statement your client may have made to law enforcement officers. Remember the prosecutor going over that particular portion during the beginning of your proffer agreement. No, but he went over this whole paper. He went over this paper. Yeah. Okay. Also in this whole paper, um, in part two, they say the state is completely free to pursue any and all investigative leads derived in any way from the proffer, which can result in the acquisition of evidence admissible against your client in any subsequent proceedings. If your client subsequently <coughs> takes a position. Basically. I sustain the objections to that. Um, can you read number two then for me, please? Uh, the state is completely free to pursue him. Oh, sir. <laughs> you can continue reading, sir. Oh. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. It's withdrawn. Go ahead, sir. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. I want, you won't object to that? I will not. Okay. All right. So, given that, Ms. Hilton. <laughs> and let me ask you this. Still want to object, Mr. Ryan? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll note your objection. I'm still going to overrule it, okay? And let me ask you this. Um, was this proffer agreement initially addressed to your attorney at the top of the page? Does it initially have your attorney's information at the top? Yes. Okay. But was this going over with you, with the prosecutor, during the earlier portion of what we just watched? Yes. Okay. Were you told um, that the state is completely free to pursue any and all investigative leads derived in any way from the proffer, which could result in the acquisition of evidence admissible against your client in subsequent proceedings? If your client subsequently takes a position in any legal proceeding that is inconsistent with the proffer, whether in pleadings, oral arguments, witness testimony, documentary evidence, questioning of witnesses, or any other matter, the state may use your client's proffer statements and all evidence directly or indirectly therefrom in any responsive pleading and argument and for cross-examination, impeachment, or rebuttal evidence. The state may also use statements made by your client in the proffer session to respond to arguments made or issues raised sua sponte by the court. If a plea or cooperation agreement is later reached with your client and your client violates that plea or cooperation agreement, the state may use your client's proper statements during any stage of any prosecution related to the violation of the plea cooperation agreement, including but not limited to proceedings before the grand jury and during all phases of any resulting trial, including the state's case in chief. Was that read to you? Uh, I don't know. You just said something the words on did. Okay. Well, why don't you read paragraph two? And see if that was read to you. I can't recall. He ran over this though. Okay, he went over this paper. Mm -hmm. All right. Number three. And when they're talking about the client, are you the person who signed this document? I was the answer that yes. Okay. And number three, and I'll break it down. Did the prosecutor tell you that if your client willfully makes false or misleading statements during the proffer, your client may be charged with perjury, obstruction of justice, making false statements? or with violating any other applicable criminal statute relating to giving the false statements. Is that the first line, the first three lines in number three? Yes. Okay. Also, did the prosecutor tell you that in such prosecution, the state may use your client's proper statements and all evidence obtained directly or indirectly therefrom? Are, are those the next few lines of that paragraph? Yes. Okay. Did the prosecutor also tell you Furthermore, in such prosecution, your client's proper statements may be used at any stage of the prosecution, including but not limited to proceedings before the grand jury and during all phases of any resulting trial, including the state's case in chief. Was that the last few sentence of paragraph three? Yes. <clears throat> Going on to paragraph four, were you told that in agreeing to provide a proffer to the state, your client agrees that the use of any statements or information provided by your client 
shall be governed by the terms and conditions set forth in Number five, were you told that if this office receives a request from another prosecutor's office for access to information obtained during to obtain pursuant to this proffer agreement, this office may furnish such information, but will only do so on the condition that the requesting office honor the provisions of this agreement. Were you told that? Yes. Okay. And number six, were you told that the proffer is to be provided for the purpose of allowing the state to assess the credibility and value of the evidence and possible testimony that we believe your client can provide. Does that conclude the first sentence of that paragraph? Yes. Did the prosecutor also say or tell you, please understand in this regard that at this juncture, your client is not entitled to any specific consideration regarding the disposition of charges currently pending against him solely because he will have given this proper. And part of that. Yes. And then lastly, um, were you told that no promises, agreements, or conditions have been entered into other than those set forth in this agreement, and none will be entered into unless memorialized in writing and signed by all parties? This agreement supersedes any prior promises, agreements, or conditions between the parties. Is that what the last paragraph said? Yes. And was it then signed, um, or is the prosecutor's name still on the bottom of that paper? Hmm? Don't tell me the name. Is the prosecutor's name on that paper? I don't see no name. It just says assistant. It just says assistant district attorney? Yeah. All right. And then on the next page, is that where you signed it? Yes. And when you signed, as it says, I have read this proper agreement carefully and have reviewed it with my attorney, Mr. Jacoby Hudson Esquire. I understand the proper agreement and I freely and voluntarily agree to it. And did you sign it and date it February 16, 2016? Yes. And did your attorney also sign it as well? Yes. It's on that same date, February 16, 2016? Yes. And then are there two additional signatures for the witnesses that were present in the room, Investigator Gaither and Investigator Dennis? Yes. Also signed on that same date? Yes. Okay. And did you give that proper that we just watched after this was read to you? Yes. 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 And <clears throat> was that your attorney, Mr. Hudson, sitting next to you during that proper agreement? Yes. And you said on cross-examination that Mr. Hudson is a family friend? Yeah, that's how I met him. Okay. And that he would put money on your books. He had before. Do you trust him? <laughs> oh. No? Yes? Yes, to an extent. All right. Did you do what he advised you to do in giving this proper statement? Objection. That would call and invade the I stand the objection. In reading and having this proper, were you attempting to be as completely honest and as truthful as you could be when you spoke during this proper? Overall, I remember Hannah asking me that. I'm asking you that. Were yeah. you trying to be completely honest and truthful? I can't remember um, what I was doing. I I'm trying to get home. I was high. Okay. You were high during the proffer or you were high when this occurred in April 12th of 2015? Both. So before you went into court, you were high? I was high all the time at Rushford. So, yeah. Did you being high affect your memory? Uh, yeah. It didn't have to. I already suffered from, I can't retain information and I had memory loss. That's why I got kept back in school. That was already a problem for me. But were you able to tell them what occurred on April 12, 2015? And also, were you able to tell them about YSL and IPGANG? 
to my knowledge today. Permission to approach? You may. Shown this to the defense counsel already? Yes, um, yesterday. I'm going to show you again what I showed you the other day at State's Exhibit 20, 21, and 22, Charlie. Charlie, I believe you told me earlier when, we, when I first asked you about it, you did not recognize those images. Now, after having reviewed that surveillance video on cross examination, do you now recognize the people and the Sitco gas station in State's Exhibit 20, 21, and 22, Charlie, Charlie? Yes. Okay. And is that a fair, accurate depiction of what you saw on the surveillance video earlier today and what it looked like back on April 12, 2015? Yes, tomorrow. Okay. You're on this time to state like the tender states exhibit 20, 21, and 22. Charlie, Charlie, okay. You said 20, 21, and 22, Charlie, Charlie? Yes. All right. Any objection to the aforementioned uh, exhibits, councils? All right, hearing none, states 20, Charlie, Charlie, 21, Charlie, Charlie, and 22, Charlie, Charlie are admitted <coughs> and may be published as you see fit. Now, while we're waiting for that to come up, let me ask you this. During the proffer agreement, did you hear yourself talk about the beef between If Gang and YSL? Yeah, I heard it. Okay. <clears throat> and during the proffer, did you mention that it was YSL the music group or was it YSL the gang that had beef with If Gang? I don't think I said, I don't recall, I don't think I said neither one of those though. When talking about the beef with If Gang, were you talking about YSL the gang or YSL the music group? I can't recall, I think that was, I was saying what I heard in Rush Group. Okay. We talked the other day about Micah Anderson and you being at one point in time friends or associate with Micah Anderson. Do you recall that line of questioning a few days ago? Yeah. All right. After January 10th of 2015, did you still have a friendship or relationship with Micah Anderson? Hmm? I'm confused. I went to prison in 2015. Right. I seen him in prison, though. Okay. I'm asking you in January 2015. January 2015, that was when you were in the hospital, right? I think it was that day. I can't recall. I know I was, it was early January, though. So my question to you is, after January 2015, not when that you saw him in prison, while y'all were out of prison, did you still hang with Micah Anderson after January of 2015? I, I can't remember when I seen, if I seen him back then though, but if I would have then, yeah. Or if I did see him then, yeah. Do you recall hanging out with him? Yes or no? I stand question. Now, during cross examination. During cross-examination, um, when Mr. Shard asked you about the incident on April 12th, 2015, do you recall him asking you if individuals doing this crime on their own? Do you remember him asking you something similar to that? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. Now, I want to go to 21, Charlie, Charlie. And 22, Charlie, Charlie. 
are you the individual with the chopper that's in it says 16 Charlie Charlie? That's the scrimmer's error. I'm over with. Are you the individual that we see holding the gun in what it says on the screen 16 Charlie Charlie, but it's actually 22 Charlie Charlie? Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Shar asked you if it was an individual crime. Let me ask you this Did a YSL member, OG Bentley, call another YSL member, Nard? to come to the gas station on April 12, 2015? Yes. Okay. And did a YSL gang member, Nard, tell you, a YSL member, let's ride at the hand of you a chopper? But I want I want to consider Bentley a gang member, though. In that proffer agreement, when they asked you, was OG Bentley YSL? Did you tell them yes? I was at the, that's where it get confusing it because I would have said yes because I'm talking and speaking on the label. Did they distinguish for you <clears throat> the difference between the label and the game? I don't recall that part. I don't recall them saying that. Okay. Well, let me continue. Did Nard, a YSL gang member, tell you another YSL gang member? Let's ride, and y'all both went along with Fatty, another YSL gang member, to the gas station. That's tricky, right there. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what's like how you putting it though. It wasn't nothing had to do with YSL about that though. In the proper room, when they actually Fatty with YSL, did you say yes? I was speaking on the game. The, At the point in time, were they asking about music during the process? They were just asking about YSL. They didn't. At any point when you were talking about shooting, were they talking about music at all? Objection calls for speculation. I stand question. In the proffer agreement, did you see them when you were talking about this shooting? Uh huh. Did they ask you at any point while you're talking about the shooting about the music group YSL? No. So I asked you again, did Nard, a YSL member, tell you, another YSL member, let's ride? Yeah. Okay. And did you, Nard, and Fatty, all YSL members, get in the truck to go ride? Yes. Okay. And in the August 2015 interview, did you tell the detectives? I didn't know if it was for a lick or what we were going for. I just knew to ride. Yes. Okay. And did you all, the three of you, go up to protect and make sure another YSL gang member, OG Bentley, and Hot Rod, who you said wasn't YSL, made sure that they were protected? I would have did that for anybody, though. Okay. But on this day, you were doing it for Bentley, when he called you all to come. Objection leading. I stand. Oh. Now. And you can answer the thing with oh. Did you all do that for another YSL member? Went up there to go make sure another YSL member and another friend was safe. I think I already, I already answered that, right? I said, yeah. Now, Mr. Steele, during his question, asked you about a few flyers. Do you still have 220 CC? 220DD, 220EE, and 220FF in front of you. Uh, I don't think I got it. I think it's underneath that page. They're not numbered. Or this one not numbered, at least. Yeah, let's see this. 
Oh, come on. Oh, okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, and 14. I can't recall. I went to a whole lot of concerts back then. Do you recall when you had your car accident? January, I think. The early, like, right after New Year's. Let me ask you about these flyers, promotion flyers. Do you recall when you had your car accident? January, I think. The early, like, right after New Year's. Let me ask you about these flyers, promotion flyers. Do you recall when you had your car accident? January, I think. The early, like, right after New Year's. Let me ask you about these flyers, promotion flyers. Are they created in advance or prior to the event? Hmm? The promotional flyers, are they created prior to the event happening? You mean before? Yes. They would have to be. They can't if they did it after. Okay. So just because they're on the flyer, does it always mean that all of the artists show up at the event? Unless it's a mishap, but they be paid by the time they put the promotion out, then they be fake promotion. Okay. But they always show up. Not, uh, depending on what the circumstances are. Okay. And so there are times where artists may be on a flyer, but they don't show up to the event. Are there times when artists? Are there times? Oh, sorry. Objections to form. You can rephrase. Are there times when artists are on flyers, but they do not show up to the event? I've seen it happen. That's the asking answer. Going to the flyer on 220 FF, which is the flyer from January 18th, 2015, were you present at that concert? I don't recall if I was there. Okay, but you said you got to your car accident in January of 2015. Like the first week of January. Okay, so you would, so it's January 18th, a few weeks after the first week of January? Yes. So would it be safe to say that you were not at that concert? I went to concerts right after my accident. Do you remember earlier that you said you were in the hospital until maybe about February of 2015? I don't recall when I went. I know when I got out the hospital, I went to talk to tours and shows and with my back brace on. I remember being there in pain. And was that the rodeo tour that you went on? I went to concerts before we left to go to the rodeo tour too. Okay. Do you know if Mr. Williams was on concert on January 10th, 2015? I don't, I can't say he was or he wasn't. Okay. Um, do you recall Mr. Steele asking you about a concert on April 26, 2015 in Louisiana with um, Mr. Williams performed? Huh? Do you recall Mr. Steele asking you about a concert on April 26, 2015 in Louisiana in which Mr. Williams performed? I don't recall. You don't say he didn't say it, but I don't recall. Do you know if Mr. Williams was performing in Louisiana on April 26, 2000? I can. Now, Mr. Steele asked you about an event on September 11, 2013. Do you remember when he asked you about that event? That was when the car, when you got shot two times in the car. Yes. Do you remember when he asked you about those events? Yes. Do you remember on direct telling me that you didn't remember anything about those events, but people told you what happened once you woke up? In uh, the hospital. hospital, yes. Right. If you don't remember anything that happened, how do you know that Mr. Williams was not with you on that day? I'll tell you, I don't remember what people told me. 
Right, but you you didn't say I don't remember Mr. Williams not being there. You said he was not with you. How do you remember that if you don't remember what happened that day? Because nobody they told me who was with me. Okay. And remember when I asked you if anyone told you that Mr. Williams was with you, you said no, he wasn't with me. No one told you. You said no, he wasn't with me. I stay, Mr. Perry. You're going to be crazy. Sure. Do you recall telling me on direct, not that no one didn't tell you he was with you, but that he was not with you? Um, I'm confused. Were you saying the first time you asked me or now? The first time I talked to you about September 11th, mm -hmm. 2013. Do you recall telling me, not that no one told you that Mr. Williams was with you, but you said no. He was not with you. I thought you asked me, did they tell you Mr. Williams was there? And I said, no. Is that what your memory is of your testimony? Yes. Now, also during direct, I mean, excuse me, during cross-examination with Mr. Um, Steele, he asked you about an incident with Shay about going to Shay's house and maybe doing drugs with Shay and maybe Michael was there. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you remember telling me on direct that you had never been at the home with Shay by herself smoking weed? Yeah, I never. Okay. That would be kind of... Right. And then do you, Mr. Still asked you, was there a time at the house that you were at the house and Buck Buck stole some drugs from the house. Do you remember him asking you that? Yes. And that Mr. Williams ended up either paying for the drugs or giving the drugs back. Do you remember him That's asking it. some line of questioning? That sounds about right. How many times did y'all steal, did Buck Buck steal drugs from Miss Bennett house in your presence? I can't remember. He stole a lot of, from a lot of different women who we went around to. I'm specifically asking about Miss Bennett. How many times have you been present when Buck Buck has stole drugs from Miss Bennett. I stand objection. Do you recall seeing in an interview talking about the beef between If Gang and YSF in the proper video? Yes. <clears throat> and in the video that you stated that the beef started after Rich Homie Quan and um, Thug, as you called him in the video, got into a beef. Do you remember that? I've seen the video, yes. Okay. Do you know if after Donovan Thomas died in January 2015, if Rich Homie Quan and Thug ever performed again? I don't, I don't have, I don't, I want to know. I don't remember. Did you go to any concerts? Because you said you went to a few concerts. Did you go to any concerts in which Rich Homie Quan and Thug performed after Donovan Thomas passed away? I never went to a concert with them performing together. Okay, you've never been to one with them performing together no. at all. Now, Mr. Steele asked you um, about your time on the rodeo tour back in 2015. Do you remember him asking you about the rodeo tour? Yes. And he said um, that you were on the tour, you were actually looking to get a job with the record label. Yes. Okay. Why would you be getting a job with the record label if you founded YSL back in 2012 and 2013? Because I was on and off from trying to be a rapper and be in the streets. I mean... But you founded YSL. I help find what I said. I feel like me. That's my opinion. And that was you, Mondo, 
thug, and tick. It's a couple of us, yes. And that's before it was ever an actual record label. And was that before it was actual actually a record label? Yes. I stand objection. Was that before it was actually a record label? Yes. You said earlier that you, and when I say earlier, I mean when we first had direct examination, that you called Mr. Williams Little Jeff. Do you remember talking about that? And Pruny, you may call him Pruny. Yes. In that proper video, did you ever call Mr. Williams Little Jeff, or did you only call him Little Jeff? I didn't hear me say Little Jeff. You did not hear me say Little Jeff. Mm -mm. What did you call him in that proper video? I would call him like what whoever I'm talking to know him by. If I would say Lil Jeff, they wouldn't know who I was talking about. Do you know? How do you know that? Hmm? How do you know they wouldn't have known him by Lil Jeff? That's the childhood now. You would have had to grow up with him to know that. But in that, in that event, you only called him that. From what I heard. <clears throat> Course indulgence for one moment. Just a few more questions, Mr. Murphy. <clears throat> Regarding that January exhibit FF, 220FF. Yes. At this time, can you testify truthfully that Quan and Thug performed at the same show on January 18th, 2015. What you mean, at this day? On this day, can you testify that they actually performed together on that same day? No. After the September 11th, 2013 incident, did you ever talk with Adrian Bean, after you woke up from the hospital, did you ever talk to, with Adrian Bean? No. Did you ever talk with Frederick Prothro? No. Did you ever talk to Mr. Williams afterwards? In, in 2013? The incident where you were shot twice. You mean, did I talk to him like after that? Yes. Did, yeah. Did you talk to Buck Buck after that? Yes.
Do you know who Courtney Bean is? No. And is it your testimony today that Mr. Williams was not with you in that car on September 11, 2013? From my knowledge, no. Nobody never told me he was with me. No one ever told you. And you don't, at this time, remember who all was in the car with you? No. And can you testify truthfully today that he was not with you on September 11, 2000? I, I stand the question. Are you able to testify truthfully today that he was not with you on September 11, 2013? I don't understand what you asked. Yes, I thought I just did that. You keep telling me that no one told me. No one told me he was with me. I got shot. I got shot. Passed out, woke up in the hospital. They woke me up. I woke up, however it happened. Thank you for saving me, Miss Hilton. 33 pounds of time is still. Get paid as a member of YSL. Okay, uh, Mr. Kokomo, could you back it up and turn the volume up? <coughs> to about 43, 47. Do you just get free drugs? Do you do you get a cut of whatever money they get? How how did you get paid as a member of YSL? You don't get paid. You just get how you live, boy. Do you need to? You gotta get it on your own. Do you need to pay some taxes? Whatever you get, do you need to share it with the crew? Uh, the home niggas went to prison. So how did you make your money at that time? I was robbing. 
So when you steal something, say you steal a thousand dollars, all of that yours, or do you need to give some back to YSL? Give some back. How much do you need to give back? At least a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so every time you have a lick, you have to pay 150. Okay. Who do you pay it to? Now, oh, a actually, Mr. Kokma, I'm sorry. Could you just continue to play for a few more seconds? Look out for the homie, call the red. Just look out for whoever ain't got it. All right, so somebody, somebody that might be in custody yeah. needs some money on their books, you? Yeah. That's, but who do you tell? How do they know that you are doing your part? How do they keep track of no. you actually? Okay. So, <clears throat> Mr. Murphy, my first question. Um, the gentleman asking the questions, Throw out a hypothetical of you. You well, first you said you get money how you get it, correct? You got to get your own. Yes. And you told uh, the person questioning you that you get it through robbing and stealing. Yes. Okay. And were you robbing and stealing? Gentlemen back asking then? questions. Throughout. Were you robbing and stealing back then? Yes. Okay. Now, you were asked a hypothetical about $1,000. If you do something to get $1,000, your answer, was your answer you give $100 or $50 back or $150? Do you recall? I can't recall. It might have been $100. It might have been one. Okay. Well, which one is it? Is it $100? Is it $50? Is it $150? It's not. No. It's, see, that's what it's confusing, too, because... I was speaking in our terms. I wasn't saying like everybody got to do this. I was just saying what I would do. The truth is there's no set percentage, correct? No. Do you do you know what percentage 150 is to 1,000? Ask that again. Was there a set percentage? No. Okay. Um, were there set expectations? <clears throat> no. You, do you remember, was there an accountant keeping track of what everyone gave? No. Were people giving to their friends? I was. Did you give to the books of people that were struggling in Rice Street and in prison? I had a couple friends in prison, so yes. Did you give to people that were struggling in Rice Street in, and in prison that you considered YSL? I don't even think they, they weren't even at home when we made it. They was already in prison. Did you give money on books to people that you considered struggling that weren't YSL? Yes. Okay. Do you remember hearing something about a red box? Yes. Where is this red box? See, that's where it's getting confusing again because that's blood terminology. That ain't had nothing right. to do with it. Yeah. Correct. That red box that you brought up in that interview when you were trying to go home, that didn't that red box didn't have anything to do with YSL, did it? That was blood terminology. That was blood terminology. That was terminology you knew from being a blood in the past, correct? Yes. Correct? Yes. And you brought up the red box because you thought bringing that up at that time would help get you out of this jam, correct? Okay, just speculation of what he thought, I'm asking him what he thought. I sustain the question as to form. Why don't you rephrase it? The red box has nothing to do with YSL, does it? No. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Murphy, uh, you're looking at that video, right? Yes. Okay. The video, what are you talking about? Uh, the one that, the, the exhibit that's still up on the screen. You see that? Yes. Okay. So I noticed that the attorney, Ms. your lawyer there, uh, he has his hand right there on your arm. You see that? Yes. It's underneath your arm, correct? I can't see it. He's right there, though. Right. And it's, it's right there. And, and it was actually there during the course of your interview, correct? Yes. 
And it was there pretty much the entire time while uh, you were doing your interview, right? Yes. And from time to time, he would nudge you and touch you, correct? I noticed that. You did notice that, right? Yes. Do you know why he was nudging you and touching you during the course of the interview? I can't remember. I didn't even remember that happened until I was just watching. Like, well, why was he going? I don't, you feel me? I, you I just noticed that, though. And you would agree that that's, that's different, isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking to myself, like, why well, I didn't say something? Okay. Now, Mr. Murphy, you talked about, well, the prosecutor asked you whether or not you recall uh, her coming out to meet with you at your residence and in court, correct? Yes. Uh, when they came out there to, to your residence, did they bring their, lot, their laptop? I ain't seen no laptop. Did they bring their iPads? I ain't seen that in their nature. Did they show you, when they went out there to meet with you, any videos back then? No. You indicated that while you were actually engaged in this interview, that you were high. Is that correct? Yes. You stated that even though you were in the Fulton County Jail at Rice Street, you were actually able to get a hold to drugs in the jail, correct? Yes, all the time. And you were consuming drugs even on the day of this interview. Is that correct? Yes, the night before, probably. Because that'd be early in the morning when you go to court and stuff. So. And you also stated that in addition to using the drugs that you had cons uh, ingested at the jail, you also indicated that you had memory loss. Is that correct? Yes, I suffer from that. <clears throat> and you say that you also could not retain information, correct? I still can't retain information. And when you were sitting there in that interview, you were wanting to say the things that they wanted to hear, they being uh, the investigator, Gaither, correct? I can't remember what I wanted to say, but I know, I know I wanted to say as soon as they can get me home. Okay. Shortly after that interview, you went home. No, shortly after that interview, you went to prison, correct? Yes. And you were facing a large number of years, and you were able to get it reduced down to a, a number that you and your lawyers agreed to, correct? Yes. You did your time in prison, right? Yes. How much time did you serve? Uh, I think seven and a half years. I got out on parole. Got out on parole. Yes. How long were you out before you went back in in July of 2000, in, in 2022? Maybe four months. Four months. And went back in on this actual case right here, correct? Yes. On the RICO case, right? Yes. And you sat in jail an additional amount of time until you reached another plea agreement, correct? Seven months. And you reached it with the with these folks over here, the district attorney's office, right? Yes. And now you're back home, correct? Yes. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I may have one second, if you don't mind. Well, it's about a second, okay. I'm gonna turn my back on the floor. Okay, okay. all right. <laughs> 
team at the end. Thank you. I'd like to ask you a question that um, to continue what the Honorable Attorney Matthews just asked you. Okay. Okay. When you were released from prison in the beginning of 2022, you then learned that you were wanted on this indictment and you turned yourself in voluntarily to the jail. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And you did that about, and I don't remember, June or July of 2022. Does that sound right? Yes. And when you turned yourself in to the Fulton County Jail, is it fair to say that you were housed, that means living, with other people on that same area who are also in this indictment? Yes. And did any of those people in 2022 beat you? No. Did any of them threaten you? No. Okay. Now, with regards to whether you know that on January 18th of 2015, I'm, I'm changing the year, okay? I'm dizzy. Okay. Don't be dizzy. Um, may still be in the hospital or you have a back situation. That's the time I'm talking about, okay? Fresh spinal cord. Yes, sir. Um, and 20 Jeffrey Williams Exhibit 220FF could be in front of you. Mm -hmm. You were asked by the prosecutor about whether you know that Rich Homiquan and Jeffrey Williams played together in Tampa, Florida um, at the USF Sun, Sundome. Remember those questions? Yes. I'd like to show you something, a newspaper article, and see if it refreshes your memory that they did, in fact, play together, okay? Okay. Your Honor, may I have Mr., and you have to show the prosecutor first, Mr. Kokomo, show the prosecutor, then Mr. Murphy. Okay, show him, and actually, he's gonna show a video, Your Honor. What exhibit is this? Uh, I will mark it um, with the court's permission, 220FF1. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on. Um, can Mr. Kokomo approach Mr. Murphy, Your Honor? He may. Thank you. Mr. Murphy, can Mr. Kokomo approach you? Yes. Okay. Does that refresh your memory whether the two played together January 18, 2015? It's, it said they did. I wasn't there, though. I don't recall being there. All right. You see the video? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you a couple things. When um, th there's, do you know of anything wrong with a lawyer talking with a witness? You, you've been in criminal cases. You said it many times. I wrong that's with what mind. they're supposed to do. Okay. And when the prosecutor and her co-workers came out to your home, um, there's nothing wrong with that? No. And um, they were, of course, polite, right? Yes. But you took offense because in your home, in front of your family, they were asking, they were accusing you of an armed robbery, right? My family was at school and work, but it was just... They didn't sit right with me. Okay, they That's were, why I feed my kids. At, you know. Okay. And they were accusing you of wrongdoing. Yes. Criminal conduct. Okay. And you shut it down thereafter. You said you called your lawyer. You already told the jury. And you said, if I don't have to meet with you, I'd rather not. Yes. And you were polite, right? Of course. Okay. Now, when the prosecutor and their coworkers came to your home, was your lawyer with you, with them? No. Was your lawyer with you? No. They just came out on their own. No, I invited them. Oh. Okay, let them come over. 
Yes. Okay. Now, I met you when you were before December 22nd, 2022. That's the day which should be in, um, in front of you. That's the day that you came before the Honorable Judge Glanville and entered the guilty plea in this case. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay, right before Christmas. Yes. 2022. And before you were released, so from the time you voluntarily surrendered or turned yourself into custody in about June or July mm -hmm. 2020 through the time you were released, I came out to the jail and met with you. Fair to say? Yes. One time. One time. And I was there with your lawyer, right? Yes. Who's was with your lawyer's advice and permission, right? Yes. And the Honorable Keith Adams was with us, with, with me and your lawyer as well, right? Yes. And we asked you, and you answered or didn't answer some questions. Is that fair to say? Yes. And we were polite, right? Of course. And then after you were released from custody and became a witness in the case, so you're no longer charged, you resolve your case. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. We met at my office. Do you remember that? Yes. And you saw Mr. Sharp walking down the hallway. Fair to say? Yes. And your lawyer was there, right? Yes. And your lawyer was with us. True? Yes. And you had to go to um, work, so it was, it was a short meeting. Yes. And then, because you're, you're working a lot, right? All the time. And we had then a Zoom meeting. Fair to say? Yes. And your lawyer was there too, right? Yes. And that's... um. What did, tell the jurors what I told you every time. That should be here, sir. Tell I your stand. lawyer what your lawyer. Yeah, I stay in the question. Tell the jurors what your lawyer told you every time we met. Just be truthful and honest, and I'm got nothing to worry about. With um, Archillian Bennett, and we've been through that, Che. You, you know who I'm talking about? Yes. In that indictment on this case, this RICO case, that you and Jeffrey are indicted, is she even mentioned? as a victim in this case? Oh, that's what confused me, because I didn't hear it until she was standing in my dining room telling me that I did it. And that being she is the prosecutor? Yes. All right. Your Honor, um, with the court's permission, I'd like to the assistant, Ms. Knight. Um, this is already in evidence, States 33C, C, is my time right? Uh, yes. Okay. This will be 4820. If we could listen to that, Mr. Murphy, if you could just listen to that, please. It's at 4820, and then we'll announce when we'll stop. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. You need to zoom from the, from the judge? Uh, I'm going to do it now. Your Honor, it looks like it's starting at How did it get to this point? Some, well, it overshot it, Your Honor, one second.
You're good. Thank you, Mr. Your Honor, this is 4818, sir. All right. Is that a lot of us? So now tell me why. Why why does I have, have problems with you? It all started by some rap, which homie, you know, uh, that's how that started. And, and they stopped hanging together and had their differences or stopped speaking. And, you know, it's like that. But I, I really want you to help me understand because I mean, rap battles are a media thing. You know, they, they do rap battles. They they have beef. They their records. Uh, their sales go up. How does this transform into people shooting at you and and shooting at your? Your right, I stopped at forty eight fifty nine. Did you hear that colloquy or the conversation between you and the prosecutor asking questions? Yes. You hear the prosecutor say to you that, um, or ask you, r rappers have rap battles and it makes their sales go up? Yes. You hear him say that? Is that something common to you? Do you know about that? Yes. Explain to the jurors what happens with a rap battle. Um, it's just like a show or anything else. They sell tickets and publicity. It's entertainment? Yeah. And it promotes the rapper or the artist? Yes. And um, if you can go to 40, is it, is it correct, 49, 40, is that right? And this, Your Honor, this should be 49, 40. Mr. Murphy, if you can help me with this too. <clears throat> Love ones, and then you got Your Honor, it's 4936. Okay. It stopped, Your Honor, at 4948. Did you hear you say that nut, or maybe big nut, that's Donovan Thomas, that's how I, I would know the person. Nut, right? yeah. Um, says that Jeffrey's not a real blood or a thug's not a real blood. Did you hear that? Yes. That's what you said, right? Yes. All right. I don't have any other questions, John. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Any further redirect? Six questions. Oh, we're going to see. Number one. Okay, all right. <laughs> not be sub either. <laughs> Earlier, Mr. Shard just asked you about a red box. You said that, that was blood terminology. You remember yes. telling him that? So that means, are you really a fake blood if you know what the blood terminology is of a red box? Huh? I, Can I get one in an addendum? No, nah, I, I understand what you're saying, but just because I know that don't determine if I'm real or fake, like a false flag, and that doesn't. All right. When asked about YSL in this interview, did you ever tell the prosecutor, the, the investigators in the room, that when they asked you about YSL and who was in YSL, that it was tricky to determine who might have been in YSL? I, I didn't hear me say that. <laughs> in that proffer, did you ever say to anyone in that room that YSL is not a game? No, okay. I, don't, I don't recall saying it or hearing it. <clears throat> Is that entire proffer in 2016 a lie? I can't recall okay. if it's the entire or half or certain parts. I, I will have. In the plea agreement that you did as it relates to this case, did you lie in that plea agreement when you did all your acknowledgements? I don't recall me lying then. Okay. So in one Charlie Charlie, you didn't lie. You told them everything you knew. I stand the questions to form. You can rephrase.
And lastly, Mr. Steele just asked you about um, this, this particular section, 4850 to about 4953. Do you recall in the interview that the prosecutor asked you, how did it come from being on wax and on music to you picking up tools and if gang picking up tools and it becoming an actual beef and not just on music? Do I recall him saying it? I heard him say that, yeah. Okay. And is that when you responded that Rich Homie Kwan is under nut? And that nut was sending shots that thug was not a blood. That's what I heard in Rush Street. That's what I said right now. Not that thug wasn't a blood, but that nut was sending shots that he was not a blood. Uh, as to the first two, I'll sustain. Third one, I'm going to overrule. And last are all the acknowledgments. And states exhibit one, Charlie Charlie. Question <laughs> you know, you're always that guy, Mr. Steele. <laughs> always that guy. Do you want to answer seven? I owe you another one anyway, so. Last, so we have, is everything a one, Charlie Charlie? The acknowledgement that you made as it relates to what you know about YSL, the gang, and what they've done. One, Charlie Charlie. And everything, did you acknowledge everything in that statement? Oh, no, this one, you said that they done. They don't say nothing that they done here, do it? Look at number 11. Yeah, but I told you that was what I, that was the charges I had. Is that what that said? That was Mr. Steele. You said what number 11 say? What does 11 say? That was extra. <laughs> Members of YSL, associates of YSL have committed crimes further to YSL, and these crimes included, but are not limited to the following murder, attempted murder, aggravated assault, death, or related to position fire. I have no further questions, Sean. Anything further? Yes, just briefly. Just one thing. You did not prepare that document, did you? What you mean, like? Right. No. Those are not real words, correct? No. And you signed it, and shortly after that, you went home, correct? Yes. Nothing Anybody else? All right. May Mr. Murphy be permanently and temporarily excused the witness? Permanently excused, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Murphy, uh, thank you for your patience with us. I'm going to permanently excuse you as a witness. Um, that means you're free to go about your usual duties, your usual duties and navigation, go to work. Um, what? I can't work. <laughs> or, uh, or, or, or do whatever else it is that um, you wish to do. But, sir, um, you don't need to be, you won't be coming back here. Just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, the hour being a little after 5.30, we are going to recess for today, all right? Um, remember, as I mentioned to you, tomorrow is a short work day. I need you all to be here for 9.30 for a 10 o'clock start time, and we will, we will recess somewhere around the noontime hour to allow one of your members to make it in time for a uh, medical appointment, okay? So that's our, that's our plan for tomorrow. What are your ministerial inquiries of me? Anyone? I'm just being kind. Remember, I don't really ask him for any input, but no, go ahead, madam. Tell me what, what's the question? Oh. Say again? Uh, no, I was just saying on behalf of all of us here, we'd like to tell Jack happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of sort of asleep, but you're very welcome. Very well. He's three today. That's right. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's ministerial nature. Okay. All right. 
Okay, let's go ahead and go through our ad nausea and admonitions and then you will send you home for the evening. Um, please do not uh, discuss anything that we have covered in small groups, uh, onesies and twosies as you're going out, no matter where you are, uh, coming and going to the courthouse as again, that would be a <clears throat> violation of the court's admonitions. Please don't sit back there and recap any of the testimony that you've heard thus far. Um, as I have not given you the instructions on how you should begin your deliberative process. And that is the only time that you will be permitted uh, to consider this case. And I'll give you instructions on how you to do that. But not now it would be a violation for you all to kind of sit back there and, and speculate and recap and otherwise handicap the testimony as you've heard thus far. Please resist temptation of going to any third party websites, blogs, or sites or doing any uh, extra research uh, as you are only allowed to consider what's lawfully presented in the four walls of this courtroom. Remember that no third party can discuss this case in your presence or hearing or if any third party should approach you or try and talk with you or try and reach out to you by email or other sort of uh, communications device, you need to let myself or Sergeant Ingram know immediately. Also, um, leave your notepads in the basket uh, and you can pick those up uh, in in the morning. And um, remember, it would be a violation for also for you to listen to any news recount news recaps or any other third party recaps of this particular proceedings. You can only consider what's presented lawfully in court. Um, and then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience and the patience that you've continued to give and will continue to give a the presentation in this matter. So ladies and gentlemen, unless you have any other means to your inquiry of me, um, I will recess you all till tomorrow morning for uh, if everybody could be here for 9.30 for our anticipated 10 o'clock start time. And as I said, we'll work as close to noon as we possibly can and then we will recess and then I will give you all instructions for the rest of the week. I think we have another short. Wednesday will begin at 1230 or at one o'clock. You need to be here for 1230, one o'clock, one o'clock start time. Thursday, we will, we, you need to be here for 8, for 8.30. We'll commence around 9 o'clock and go to about 1.40, 1.45, somewhere around there, as one of your members has an afternoon um, medical appointment as well. And then Friday, April the 19th, um, you will be here for... 1230 we'll begin at one and we'll probably work till somewhere around five o'clock. That's the week. Okay. All right. Unless you have anything else, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in the morning. Okay. All right. All rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please be seated. Our jury has left us. Okay, State, do you have your witnesses ready for tomorrow? I know we have uh, many witnesses who will be here at 10, so that should be perfect. Um, anybody else that we're going to call or hear from tomorrow? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we anticipate hearing from uh, uh, two more, potentially, um, Dexter Montgomery and... Okay, all right. Well, it is uh, your time recording. Okay, all right. Anything else I need to take up before the moral councils, Mr. Steele? Can I ask a question? Yes, what's your question, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if the state can tell us, is Detective Gaither and Detective Dennis, are they multiple witnesses? Like, no, like, I didn't want to. 
cross-examining the other issues too, but investigator Belknap, or Detective Belknap, I just want to do it one time. Can I just inquire if that's okay, whether this is going to be a multiple, you know, jump around witnesses to be recalled or is it one time, if you don't mind, not inquiring in the state telling Not jump around, but multiple because there are different acts. Um, so, so, okay, let's just, let's just, let's just break it down into how many times you anticipate um, your first witness bill, um, your first witness to be <coughs> testify. Um, so the first one will be Lopez, and she's just that. And um, the lady is the one. Uh, Speaking microphone, please. I Microphone. Sure, right, can I, don't, I don't anticipate um, calling either of them more than twice. Is right? Who is that? Who are you Gaither talking about? Gaither and Dennis. Okay, so Gaither and Dennis will be called twice, you Hold think? On, Your Honor. Just one second. So Gaither no more than twice. And Dennis, for the purpose of tomorrow, we are no more than twice. And I will let the court and Mr. Shield know, and I can speak to him offline with respect to Dennis. I believe that we, um, in our previous orders, approved given to them as to which person would testify about what act we have asked that we anticipate. So is he only going to be called once, or are you going to let me know tomorrow? No, we, we will let you know tomorrow, Your Honor. We have already let counsel for the defendants know the acts that we anticipate them testifying to. That's the only reason I said we can speak offline. Uh, okay, listen, I, I'm, I think Mr. Steele just wants to know whether or not you're going to call, whether or not you're going to, how many times you're going to call each respective witness so, um, so you can make a decision as to whether or not he wants to examine them all. <laughs> At one time or or accordingly, okay? Yes, John. Thank All right. You. Okay, anybody else anybody else? So it's just a so it's just the Dexter Montgomery Act, correct? So Judge, as the, so as to um, because I know that we are um, likely introducing things that may not um, be crimes but are other items of evidence. Um, I believe that to be perfectly safe, I can um, make sure that I am accounting for all of the items that we will introduce through Detective Gaither tomorrow and speak with um, counsel for Mr. Steelwell um, no later than 7.30 tonight and give him a better account so that we are not constrained um, by the inquiry made in this moment so that I can give an accurate account. All right. Okay, anything else? Just, just for that happy, happiness and preparation and knowledge of the court. Um, remember I filed, I tried to notice uh, Mr. Williams of motion limit number 48. And that was Tell me that this morning, but what are you? I'm not sure if that goes to the PowerPoint. I'm just, I'm get, getting confused on whether it's ripe yet. Cause you said, tell us when it's ripe. I, I can't tell you. If it's right, but if it is, it's a long. I can't open the PowerPoint, anyways, Mr. Atkins. So, what does the PowerPoint? What does it cover? Who does it cover? Your Honor, the PowerPoint has um, again. I'll, and I don't know why it's giving trouble opening, um, but we can one make everyone access it to, to, today, and two, uh, I can speak with counsel for Mr. Williams. 
Williams as well um, this afternoon by 7 30 as to anything that we have in there that we anticipate uh, bringing through to take the case. And also, Your Honor, I would say that um, I will email the court and the parties. Because I don't have, I mean, I can't open it so I can't see it. Is the PowerPoint going to be like, um, is it just exhibits that you're going to? Yes that you're gonna lay a foundation, authenticate, and then ask about? Yes, that's all Okay, all right, and so. I don't know what caused it um, to not open, but. All right, we should just send the court and the parties a copy so yes. they'll have it, but Mr. Steele, if I understand correctly, it's just for ease of being built that they'll qualify each, each particular document. Just wanna let you know, it's gonna be, I'm gonna have the same objection you sustained today when I was moving to admit there's going to be words on a page. There's going to be vocals being said. There's going to be statements being said by non-witnesses. So I'm I'm just alert. I put it in writing, like you you asked, or you okay. ordered. But I'm just letting you know. I don't want you to say it, it could take a long time. Is what I'm telling you. There's a lot of exhibits there that I challenged. Okay. Well, I mean, subject to the court's ruling. I mean, I have to take it on an individual basis. But foundation's one thing. Okay. But you know, of course. Exhibit sometimes have multiple, sometimes may have multiple objections. I just have to kind of see it, at, see it in order to rule on it. So yeah, I understand Mr. Steele. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, um, anything else? All right. Okay, anyone? Going once, twice? All right, we'll see you all in the morning uh, for, if you all could be here a little before I'd say 9.45, we can get started right at 10 o'clock. Um, that would be helpful. We'll see you all tomorrow morning at 9, 9.45, okay? Yes, sir. All right, see you then.